<laughs> All right. So welcome back to another Thursday night, uh, where we call this the uplift. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> and uh, this is uh, something that, you know, is definitely relevant. It's needed. It's necessary. It's, it's something that the Lord gave us. And so as we continue in this vein, um, strengthening each other, uplifting each other, um, hearing what the Lord has to say. Um, did everybody get my the email with? Uh, I have I had a scripture on there and uh, just a couple of questions. Very wicked, very wicked of you to give us that scripture. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to pull. I want to pull out a couple of uh, verses. Not all the. It's not the whole thing. I'm not going to deal with the whole thing when it comes to the man and the the woman and you know I I don't want to deal with that part. I want to deal with the character part. Okay. Okay. Right. So it wasn't the the entire. Thing. So I, I should have, I should have clarified that. It's all good though. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Um, but thank you for being here on tonight, uh, Minister Lockhart. We're so grateful to have you tonight, and I, we pray that this is uplifting for you also. Um, we've been doing this for months, couple months yeah. now, um, and the Lord has really um, shown Himself mighty and strong in right in these meetings. And so, yeah. um, welcome tonight, and. Uh, thank you. So I want to try to deal with uh, just two things tonight. The first thing I want to deal with is that scripture. Um, I want to try to conclude character and leadership tonight. So I'm, I'm you know, if, <laughs> if we can conclude it tonight, we can. If we can't, we'll just go on. But I wanted to try to bring it into close tonight and um, deal with um, the other questions that I did ask in the email about what, what's the Lord saying to you in this season? It is September. It's a, you know, month of new newness. Isn't your birthday next week, Pastor Jay? Yeah, I, I remember that. September 9th, right? Yep. See? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I remember. Um, and that's what? Next Wednesday. Okay. You going to be good for next week? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, but I, I, I can forgive you if, you know, <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I want to kind of find out what the Lord is saying and, you know, uh, in this season to you all, as this is the ninth month, uh, birth, beginnings, um, and so forth. So let me just um, kind of pull something up real quick. And I always like to set the backdrop as usual. Y'all know me by now. Uh, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> I try to set up a backdrop so we can all see where we're going with this thing. Um, but like I said, I'm kind of, can everybody see this PowerPoint? Yes. Do I have to make yes. it bigger, Elder Stacy? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Can you read? Okay. I'm just checking. I got to check with you. You're cuss, cussing me off under your breath about, it. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, Let's go forward. And um, like I said, I want, just want to recap real quick, uh, just to kind of encapsulate the weeks that we've been trying to deal with this. Um, obviously, I'm not going to talk about everything we uh, discussed, but just the, uh, some of the important things I'm just going to pull out, of course, the panel. <laughs> and then we've been lead dealing with leadership in the church, um, taken from 1 Timothy 3, verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> and there are the different versions of because leadership starts obviously from the top, the leaders. Um, and then if anyone desires to be or provide leadership in the church, and then it outlines um, what that type of person should be. If anyone wants to be a pastor, um, if anyone eagerly seeks the office of bishop or overseer, um, and then if anyone desires to be a church official. So basically all the different versions of the scriptures say the same thing. It points towards um, the pastor, the bishop, the leader um, as leadership in the church. It starts from the head. And um, so we start to open up what character is. And of course, um, we broke down character, been dealing with character for the past four weeks. This is the fourth week. Um, and of course, character matters. And there are some words that um, sprout from character, integrity, ability to delegate, communication, self-awareness, gratitude, learning, influence, empathy, courage, respect. 
Um, and then leaders and leaders, leadership that should model character. And of course, I broke down break, breakdown of the words, the Greek words for pastor, the Greek words for elder, um, the Greek translation for bishop. Um, and then, of course, all three are used interchangeably in scripture. Um, distinctive role of a bishop and service of an elder. The evidence indicates that all three refer to the same call, but different offices and serve on different levels. And there are a few scriptures to support that. And then of course, a couple, uh, two weeks ago, I think we dealt with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and how their character stood out um, once they were taken from their own uh, country and brought into Babylon and how the character was seen at the beginning, very beginning, Jan Daniel chapter one of how the Lord um, put favor upon these men uh, and the character started to shine from that moment on. So we dealt with that. And then, of course, last week, J Pastor Janet slapped us mm -hmm. the week before. The week before. Mm. The week before. She kind of yeah. <laughs> took us oh, somewhere, yes. Malachi chapter 2. And we've been dealing with this one uh, for about a week, last week and the week before. Um, talked about if the leaders are not acting right, so to speak, then God will. <laughs> God will curse your blessings. Curse your blessings. You're cursed already. Uh, your corrupt seed. It'll uh, put dung upon your face. Oh, your face. I tell you, this one was heavy. It's heavy. Find this scripture. I know. Oh, um, we've always read Malachi three, but we've never kind of backpedaled right. into Malachi two. So this was really good bringing out this point um, for the past week. Uh, last week we dealt with it. So thank you, Pastor Jay. It's definitely a warning to all leaders and leadership. Um, and it, you know, it's something that I will definitely use <clears throat> wherever I go. <laughs> All right. It's definitely a warning. So thank you for bringing that to our attention and our, 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 you know, our meeting last week. The uplift. Yes. Um, I pulled something from John Maxwell <clears throat> to support um, what we're dealing with in character and leadership. Of course, John Maxwell has written several books about leadership and character. Um, being a leader is about having a genuine willingness to, and a true commitment to lead others to achieve a common vision and goals through positive influence. No leader can ever achieve anything great or lasting, long lasting, all alone. Teamwork goes hand in hand with leadership. Leadership is all about, is about people and for people. And then of course, leadership is influence just because someone has a title of leader doesn't mean they are a leader i think that's a great point right there mm -hmm. the yeah. greatest the greatest reflection on a leader being a true leader is whether they are influencing anyone and of course the first place you'll see that is in the leader's people all right an organization is only as great as its people if the people aren't following the leader isn't leading mm. Too often, leaders get focused on the bottom line, financial results, instead of growing their people and their company. Now, we could deal with that, but I, we want to move on. So, <laughs> But that's some great points I just pulled out from um, John Maxwell on leadership. And you know what they call a, a person who calls himself a leader, but nobody's following, right? Yeah. <laughs> just a man taking a walk. You just, yep, by yourself. <laughs> So tonight I wanted to talk, touch on these scriptures tonight, um, Titus 2, just to kind of wrap this thing up if we can um, and just talk about it a little bit more, examine it um, on character in leadership. And this is uh, Titus 2, uh, 1 to 3. And then I want to deal with verse 7. Um, so the King James Version said, but, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperance, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise that they being good in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, <laughs> teachers of good things. And then verse seven, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. I wanted to read uh, Titus two verse one to six in the message version. It says, your job is to speak out on the things that make for solid doctrine. Guide older men 
into lives of temperance, dignity, and wisdom, into healthy faith, love, and endurance. Guide older women into lives of reverence so that they end up as neither gossips nor drunks, <laughs> but, but models of goodness by looking at them. The younger men, women will know how to love their husbands and, and children, be virtuous and pure, keep a good house, be good wives. We don't want anyone looking down on God's message because of their behavior. Also guide the young men to live disciplined lives, but mostly show them all this by doing it yourself. <laughs> Incorruptible in your teaching, your words, solid and sane. <laughs> <laughs> so there are other versions that um, I pulled up and I'm not going to read them all but I pulled out a few words out of Titus 2 that I thought that refer to the character and leadership sound doctrine being sober grave temperance sound in faith charity patience behavior uncorruptness gravity sincerity dignity wisdom models of goodness a few more incorruptible I, I, I can't teaching. read this can you guys read this Oh, it's yeah. too small? I can't read it. Is it me? I'm so sorry. Can you fix it? Maybe me. Lady P, I'm sorry. <laughs> Does that make any better? Yes, thank you. <laughs> I can adjust, you know. So, character by looking at them. Uh. <laughs> People are looking for us to model Christianity. Our lifestyles must be Christocentric. That's that word that um, we, everything we do revolves around Christ. They should be able to see Christ through our spiritual character and godly behavior. But when they look at us or church, they see and say, everyone in church are hypocrites, double-minded and unstable. So let's talk about that for a few minutes. I do have one or two more I questions. See that, I see that the word there actually says unable. I'm sorry, say it again. That could be part of it too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't discount that word, put it that way. Right. So I had a question, but I can take some commentary before I go to my question. Titus chapter two. Let's talk. <laughs> uh, you know what? I I kept, I stuck on I got stuck on chat, um, verse eight. Even though you didn't go to verse eight, mm -hmm. I got stuck on verse eight because it said, "I'm going to read the amplified version." Um, it said dignified and sound and beyond reproach. In other words, be with on beyond reproach in in instruction, so that the opponent of the faith will be ashamed, having nothing bad to say about us. So I kind of thought that that was that was good to have that in with everything that um, you read in the first few verses of why you know to live that way with integrity and everything. It's so that that those that who oppose the faith, you don't, you, you may not believe, you may not like me, but you will respect because you understand that the person is walking with integrity. Do you know what I mean? You might not agree with their religious beliefs, but you can walk with integrity and still find favor. Mm -hmm. Right. And you'll find people that they don't even necessarily believe in God, but because of your integrity, you find favor and, and they will be the first to give funding or support whatever you're doing, because they know it comes from a good place, a good heart, per se. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I just thought it was good to leave that there. Um, and and this, this particular verses that you read in Titus is entitled Right Living in the Church. So. He's giving instruction on how to live right. Right. And I'm always saying, live right, do right. Live right, do right, you'll be all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he's giving in those instructions of how to live right, what it takes. And it's not, it, it may be encapsulated really well, but all of those steps aren't necessarily that easy mm -hmm. to live that way. We might do it one day, be good this week, be good today and tomorrow. Somebody come with something else that kind of throws you off. So, you know, um, when I read it, I was like, oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. All right. Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, I did. Right, <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. 
Yeah, but that's I okay because we we certainly do need to be reminded. I think in um, in this time period, I, again, this reset time, I I firmly believe that those who are called to leadership or or, or are in leadership positions. I believe there's a weight in terms of making sure you are who you say you are and where you're supposed to be. Because when, as this begins to um, disseminate all, and, and evaporate all this stuff, the people that are coming need to already find leaders in place. Good true point. leaders, true leaders, true examples already in place. I don't think there's gonna be time to start creating it once the people are there. You've got to get ready now, get it done because he's about to do something and we need to be ready. I agree. And that's why one of the things that I talked about before is um, I think last week I mentioned it about isolation. God has put us in this time of isolation so that we can, I guess, re re retool sharpen our tools, get ready, um, do all our studying, do all our, you know, soul searching, making a true commitment because now you can't do much. So the time that you should be taking, the time to spend with God, you should be, you know, reinventing. Um, there's a word called recalibrate. You know, yeah, we should be... Really my word. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we should be measuring ourselves by a standard and going over it and over it again to make sure that the standard that we're, we're, we're at, you know, we've done something to measure ourselves, to better ourselves, to uphold and stay at that standard, that, that level of commitment, that level of, you know, um, faithfulness, that level of maturity, that, so that when these people do come in, we're now equipped, as you said, Pastor Jay, to handle them. But the problem is we're not doing that in this season. A lot of people I know, they're just glad for the break. They're just glad to be away from church. They're glad to, hey, yep. peace. You know, I'll see you all in, you know, next year, <laughs> 2021. Remember, remember while we're measuring, we, we touched on it last week a little bit. While we are measuring, we have to make sure the measure we are using is the word of God and not the world standard and not even not even the church building organization standard. I want to make that clear. I'm not talking about the church kingdom. I'm talking about the buildings, the doctrines, the, the denomination standards. We need to be measuring by the word of God standard. I agree. That's the standard. I totally oh, agree. <laughs> uh, agree. Mr. Lockhart, this is a, uh, you jump in yeah. when you feel something. So don't, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to say if you have anything to say, just if, if God gives you something, you jump in. All right. So I just, I, I wasn't you. sure if I was clear on that, but um, that's how, that's how we flow. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I've been doing recently is I've been reading up on a lot of history, um, a lot of church history, a lot of histories of how um, the different denominations got started um, and who started them and how did it start? Uh, why did it start? You know, there was a couple mm -hmm. through history. There were a few things called the Great Awakenings. And in uh, yep. the, yeah, you, the last Great Awakening had to do with uh, Azusa and the mm -hmm. revivals that mm -hmm. um, started then and the different denominations that branched off from those. I think the revivals it was like for three years. It was like every night they were, you know, people kept coming in from all over the world. It's um, a young black man in a little church. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's what I've been doing recently just to kind of make sure that um, looking at what's going on, because everybody believes that they're, they're right and everybody believes that they have the truth and everybody believes that what they're doing in their church building, like you said, Pastor Jay, is, is, is it, you know. Right. And so we have to, like you said, we can't just take a building's word for it. We can't just even take an organization's word for it. You've got to know God. The Bible is the standard. And, and so God has given us the, the standard. <laughs> and if we fall short from that, then we are definitely lacking um, as leaders because that standard is given to us so that we can measure ourselves. You can't compare yourself by yourself, first of all, because, you know, in our eyes, we're great. We're grand. We, you know, we, we got it going on. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I got, you know, shoot, I'm good. But in God's eyes, in God's standards, you know, how do we measure ourselves? How do you look? And so... Going back to what you said, Pastor Jay, I think that um, what we need to do, and like you said, as leaders and leadership, get your people ready. 
train mm -hmm. your people. Past, uh, Apostle keeps saying it. You've got to disciple. You've got to train. You've got to, you know, influence who's under your sphere of influence, as John Maxwell said, because if you can't influence people, you're not a leader. <laughs> Leaders have influence. So you should, uh, Jesus had influence. Whatever he said, wherever he went, people responded. He had influence. And so um, I think Titus 2 points to the character of a person. And it points to how we need to conduct ourselves as leaders. Um, grave, you know, it talked about being. <laughs> I mean, there's so much that it, it, it kind of brought out. And all I saw is just char the character of a person, how we're supposed to conduct as leaders. That's mm -hmm. what I saw when I looked at it. I was like, wow, okay. And, and said, you know, as we were, as you were talking about, you know, and training our people and everything else like that. Um, and, and we are talking tonight about how important it is that we are, we're measuring by the word of God. And, and you know, I've, I've seen it over the years and I've done it myself, you know, sitting there, is that a lot of people don't even bring their Bibles to church anymore. <laughs> right? We have the phones to do whatever, so we don't bring that. We don't actually open the book. And it's funny because we were doing um, our Bible study last night and it was a scripture we were, we were reading. And Got so I said, own. okay, so, so everybody said, so everybody open, open it and read the, look at it and read it. And I could see some confused, confused faces. I was like, you, it's Bible study. You ought to bring your Bible to Bible study because <laughs> that's what Bible study is about. So and I need you to look at it for yourself. Right. True. Um, so true. And I think that um, people have become comfortable in being spoon fed. Mm. Yeah. And that's why it's important that we're measuring by the word of God. And that's why I said not about denomination and not about the, the church building, because the same thing talks about the, your fault so that you won't be swayed by the, by the charisma of a false teacher because mm. false teachers have influence. Yeah. False teachers can speak powerful. Yeah. False teachers can, can, can switch up the truth. And if you are not looking into the word yourself, it will sound so much like the word, enough to convince you. And that's why the Lord said he didn't shorten the days for the elect because it will sound so much like it. So you've got to look for yourself. But here we go. We're in, a, we're in a, uh, uh, a, an age where people have been drawn away from the word to open it up and look at it for yourself to just, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the preacher is supposed to just feed it to them and give it to them. And whatever he says, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You better go check even that. Check me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. <laughs> check the source. <laughs> my bishop used to say that. A bishop used to say that all the time. Don't, don't just take my word for it. <laughs> check. check for yourself. Right. Find it for yourself. Look for it yourself. Mm -hmm. Be because that's, the, that's how many of us get caught up in the charisma. Oh, she's such a great yeah. preacher he's such a great prophet he can mm -hmm. preach she can preach she can sing but you know behind it all we can we can formulate church we have a form of it we can do it because we know how to do it you know we can manipulate a song we can manif i like the word manufacture <laughs> we, we like yeah. to manufacture because we know how to do it I can play the key. I can play the keyboards with my eyes closed because I know how to do it. That doesn't say I'm I'm in the spirit. No, I just know how to do that. <laughs> and but people think you think I'm in the spirit while I'm playing my. I know. I just know how to play with my eyes closed. You're holding on your gift. I've been holding on my gift, yeah. but you know, it's, unfortunately, you know what we see sometimes is not what it is. It's what it appears to be. Right. And you, we can bet if we're not, we don't have the spirit of discernment if we don't know how to discern what is actually the spirit of God and what is actually just, you know, we're just trying to think or trying to make mm -hmm. something, conjure something up, create something, you know, we got to know the difference between, you know, the spirit of God and us <laughs> flesh, because there's things we can, we're gifted to do certain things, but, but you know what, as well, God knows the heart all times and God knows the intent of the heart yeah. at all times. And I think one of the things that, we have to be careful of is that God will use, allow our gifts to bless others and to minister to others. And like he said in his word, and yet you be lost. Yeah. Be a castaway. That's mm -hmm. the worst thing. I mean, Pastor Chris said it a few weeks ago. Right? I'll never forget that. Pastor, yeah. Chris, Pastor Chris said, God will let you 
you know, all kinds of people for him. He'll look, and then you'll still find your way to, to, straight to hell. Straight Mercy. to hell. <laughs> Um, I never knew you. And you're like, what? You never knew me, but I did all this stuff for you. God, God is more concerned about his people than he is about you being a crazy hypocrite. So Graham. we do have yeah. to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And we have to always examine ourselves. I yeah. don't care how well we sing, how well we preach, how well we teach. Don't, can't let that get to our heads. Because once that gets to our head, it becomes pride. And then the enemy... Has got, you know, that's one of the seven deadly sins. And yep. then the enemy has a loophole that he will use to work on us. So I am I'm a firm believer in constantly examining Patricia, this Patricia. Yep. I cannot examine you. I can only examine me, Patricia. Mm -hmm. um, and that way it keeps me humble. And I think I said this a few weeks ago. You know, I would be asked to do things or I would be to do stuff for the church or kingdom. And I'd be a nervous wreck before I do it. And people say, well, you do it all the time. I'm like, so all I need is God to move one centimeter. And it's a total failure and embarrassment. So I keep my, I try to, mm -mm, mm -mm, you know, I keep, I examine myself regularly. Because if not, we will not be sober minded. We will not operate from a true place. And we will become part of the problem instead of part of the scene. Yep. That's what I see. I think that's I think that's a, that's one of the strong points of a uh, how God God uses those true leaders because that I don't think that leader or that pastor or that elder or so and so is the person that's rushing running to the front to be seen. They're the ones that you almost have to edge and push, and God has to nudge and keep pushing them, and He places them there. Do you see what I'm saying? Amen. Yeah. And when you go somewhere, you try to hide. And some, yeah. and he'll he will tell people who you are before you find you though. They find you don't you you hiding somewhere in the back. You got your head down low. You're not even looking up. And somebody, hey you, sorry. <laughs> no escape. You know, Wait, so me? No, you me. have those. You have those who just won't leave you alone. Isn't that right, Pastor Jay? I don't want to. <laughs> hey, Miss Cotton Candy, Minister Candy. Well. Oh, she went from Cotton Candy to Minister Jean again. <laughs> Hi, Minister Jean. I didn't know who Cotton Candy was. You got your mute on, Jean. You, you, your mic. Good evening, <laughs> Pastor Jean. So Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> We're so glad you can be with us. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here. We're so happy to <laughs> miss you when you're not. Jean, I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, anyway, <laughs> well, welcome, so welcome, Minister. Thank God that you're here. We well, thank God that you're here, Minister Jean. We thank okay, you thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Um, but it's so true. Going back to what you said, Pastor Jay, it's and uh, Lady P. Um, can you all hear me well? Because I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I think I'm having some issues here, but. Um, you know, we have to, and I think, I, I love the way you, you put it, um, Pastor Jay, the word of God is the standard. Yeah. And we can never deviate from that standard. And unfortunately, too many people, um, they measure themselves by themselves. They measure themselves by a response. If people are getting with it, then yeah, you tore that church up. Or yeah, you, you know, you, but under it all, it's not you. You know, it's God using you. And like you said, Lady P, he'll use you until what yourself will be a castaway. Others will be saved. You know, he'll use you to get his word across. He'll use you to save somebody. He'll use you. But if you don't know him yourself, if you're measuring yourself by yourself, caught up in yourself as a leader, then, you know, at the obviously at the end, we're going to be lost. Um, and so we have to let a man, therefore, <laughs> examine yeah. himself, examine himself. To, to see if he's, you know, in as the a script faith. in the faith, as the scripture said, um, I think, um, I use the term recalibrate because, um, it's measuring, it's a measuring process, checking yourselves, um, and, or adjusting in comparison with a standard. So I think what this, this right. whole six week, six months has taught me how to recalibrate and adjust um, to a standard, which is <laughs> the word of God. I still, I still read mine, Pastor Jay. I still mark mine up. As <laughs> Me too. I, I do. I, I still carry mine. I, I still, you know, I don't stick to stay with just a cell phone or the, 
I use the iPad if I have to preach because I can't be flipping through pages while I'm preaching and stuff like that. So <laughs> I use the I iPad to preach. To flip. But I, because <laughs> I get on a when I get on a roll, I'm on a roll. I can't. I, I just that's just me. But um, <clears throat> we must use the Word of God as a standard, the measuring stick. And according to Titus two, um, there's something that I just saw in there, verse seven. In in all in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine. Okay, and so we must continually show ourselves patterns of good work, good works. Um, even in the season, I ask people all the time, so what have you been doing for the past couple months? You know, what is God saying to you? What is, you know, because that just, you, you tell me if God ain't saying nothing to you in these six months, <laughs> that just tells me you're, you're just not, you know, what are you doing for six months for lockdown, for quarantine for isolation and if we have not you know recalibrated grown, grown, grown. if we haven't watered grown if we haven't you know then what are we you know god has given us this time he's given your leadership time he's given right. the pastor's time he's given the overseer's time he's given the elders time he's given the minister's time what are we mm -hmm. doing with this time <laughs> that's my question and so I just believe um, looking at Titus again, you know, it points to character. It points to the character, um, the certain behaviors that we should have as leaders. There's certain a way we carry ourselves. There's a way we talk to people. There's a way you learn the scriptures so that you can right. teach sound doctrine instead of half, you know what, learning it. And, you know, we have ah, God bless the child that has his own. And we say things that are not even in the scripture. You know, that we, you know, because it's charismatic. We like to say stuff that's charismatic, but we don't, we got to know the word. We, come on now. <laughs> you know, I can tell, you know, can't you tell? Somebody up there just, you know, saying things that, and you're like, wait a minute. Is that rhyme? That... Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Red Sea and the law. It gave, you know, me. <laughs> they gave me. And I could see <laughs> what I could be. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> Rhyming mm, it, mm, mm. you know, oh. and I'm like, well, well what does I have to yeah. do? So, you Pastor know? John. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to, but you know, I just wanted to say briefly, um, when you all were, we were talking about, you know, character and all of those things, and you know, I've said this before, where I believe that we have, because of the the world has gone to a, such a crazy place, we as Christians have gotten desensitized to some of the things that we see. Right. And so therefore it looks like these things are okay. And so our leaders and, you know, us, we get caught up in certain, certain things and certain things we do, we think it's okay um, because the world is not, uh, you know, we're measuring ourselves against the world and not against the word. <laughs> and so when we look at the word as our standard is at that point, we realize, oh, you know, this is not right. But I just believe a lot of folks are measuring themselves, you know, across instead of upward to God. And mm -hmm. because, again, we see so much craziness in this world. So now it's okay for me to lower my standard because I still look better than, you know, the person who may not be in the word. I look, I look better than that. However, um, and the world is now saying, you know, it's okay. And I think a lot of folks, a lot of us have fallen into some of those, some of those traps. But when we get back into the word of God, like I said, when I'll never forget, even growing up, I used to, you know, this is a young teenager go, oh, at least I'm not doing that. At least I'm not doing this. <laughs> but when I looked in the word of God, oh, I wanted to run up under a rock and hide yeah. because I was not measuring up to what the word said. I, th I think because for a long time, real? people look at the big what we call the big sins. Uh -huh. If we weren't robbing banks, committing adultery, right. <laughs> if we weren't, you know, doing that kind of stuff, we thought we weren't that bad. Although we may be backbiting, we may be lying, we may right, be right. malicious, we may be angry people, and we we, we thought that was the, those were the smallest sins. But there there are no smaller sins. No so small sins. That's when right. we examine ourselves, yeah. we realize that we all have some areas that we still need to measure up to the Word of God, and so. Um, when we measure ourselves by ourselves and by other people, 
right. we will always try to justify the, right. the wrong things that we want to do I and agree. get away with. Yep. Because, oh, I'm not as bad as. Right. Yeah. I should just say, I'm not as bad. I'm not, oh, can you believe they did that? And, you know, it's like, mm, but what are you doing, Patricia? This, this right. Patricia. Not, not. I know. Me, Patricia, do right. You gossip yesterday. I mean, did you did you talk about someone that you shouldn't have spoken about yesterday? Did you look at someone? And then that's why we have to always use the word of God as our measurement. Yeah. As our measuring, yeah. I agree. yeah. The, the problem yeah. is when we when we when we air and use the world at any time as the standard, or or as or as the the rule of the gauge. Remember, the world constantly keeps changing truth. Mm -hmm. It keeps changing. Sorry, it keeps changing facts. It will never be able to change truth. Please right. right. And I know you meant them. It keeps yeah. changing facts, and so as it keeps changing, like we go changing <laughs> too. <laughs> that we have gone. I heard you. <laughs> but, I Tim, I'm sorry. That just slipped out. <laughs> then we may be. Then we may be a little better than the world, but we are still further away from God. And every time, it's right. almost like it's almost like when somebody gets caught in a wave. And you think you're by the shore, mm. and so you, you like this. And then you turn around and you're like, "Wait a minute, where, where's where's land? <laughs> what happened? Where, where did I get out here? Where's land?" Because it dr and look look at that. It drifts you out so subtly that you did not even realize that there was no more land in sight yeah, right. until you turned back to the shore. Mm. Yeah, subtly. I lo I then, love you that. Start, then, you, then you start flailing. I love mm -hmm. that statement, Pastor Jay. I don't know if you, I don't know if you realize what you just said. You said better than the world, but further away from God. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves better than the world, wow. but further away yep. from God. Long measuring stick. You know what? Somebody needs to turn around and look where the land is. <laughs> <laughs> because if you know and that that goes back to what uh lady p just said you know you can't just look you can't measure we can't measure ourselves by the world standards the world ain't got no standards first of all <laughs> is there anything oh, there's it, there's no standard there there's no there's no righteousness there's no what is the world standard nothing yeah <laughs> you the know world what I'm standard is what the world standard is what pleases man, and that is biblical, that men will be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. So what pleases me is the standard. And if it doesn't please you, then guess what? I'm just going to get enough people to sign on with me that it pleases them, and so now you need to change. Mm -hmm. You sound like somebody. You, so, sound like somebody we all know. <laughs> uh, <Lordy>. But um, <laughs> stop talking about your leader. Did you know what? <laughs> I know who I you're talking about. I only have one Did leader, I... and he's here. Oh, oh, oh right okay, here. okay, right here, right Let's here. stop talking about the leader of the United States. <laughs> is that is that who it was? The oh, world, oh yeah, the world leader. Um, but it's the truth. It's the truth. We cannot become so because a lot of people have become lackadaisical as well. You know, oh, yeah. and I'm, I'm not just out, out here to throw stones at people either. I'm not trying to create that type of a conversation. But um, as leaders, though, you know, we have a responsibility uh, to uphold that standard. You know, people look to us for the answer. They're looking to you. You know, what should I do in this situation? And we have to be ready to answer anyone you know, give an answer. And even in the marketplace, I'm glad you mentioned that earlier, um, Pastor Jay. Um, there are certain things in the marketplace, you don't, you don't even have to open your mouth and say, I'm a Christian. It's just the light that's shining through you. Mm -hmm. You know, your speech is different. And you know how many times people have come up to me and say, and I'm not just uh, trying to toot my own horn. It's uh, people, I'm sure it happens to you as well. There's something different about you. They'll say there's there's something, you know, are you, do you go, are you, you know, and then, of course, it opens up a conversation because they see that you're not going the same standard or the same way as what they're used to or what they're used to seeing. There is, your speech is different. It doesn't matter. You could teach in a class. It doesn't have to be on, nothing spiritual at all about it, but mm -hmm. the way you articulate your words, the way you involve everybody, the way you talk to people, they see something different about you. Let your light therefore shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. And so that's the standard. You know, our light should be shining no matter what. We should be ready as leaders to have answers for 
the the influx inflow that's coming as you say pastor j mm -hmm. after, after this whole thing is over people are, you know want they're gonna want god they're gonna want to come to a place to find god and see god and you know if these leaders our leadership have not taken the time over these past couple of months to prepare, then we're going to be unprepared and further away from God. And the thing is, you're going to be leading other people further away. Further away. Well. Yeah. This is, this is where that heresy <laughs> and error comes in that you are, you are off track. Um, you're going down the wrong road. Now you've erred, erred and you're taking other people with you because you are in a position of influence mm. because people listen to you and they think what you say is solid enough for them oh, to accept yeah. it, embrace it and begin to flesh that out. That's why we have to be careful what comes out of our mouths. We have to be yeah. careful what goes into our spirit to come out of our mouths. We have to be able, you, you almost have to take sometimes your own little spiritual retreat oh, yeah. to, cleanse, to cleanse yourself to cleanse you. So, you know what I'm saying? Because remember, at the same time, you are absorbing, you are, people are coming with all kinds of stuff as well. And so you have to cleanse yourself, cleanse your mind as well. Get a time for just you and God, just to ay, exhale, whatever that, whatever it is you need to do so that you can hear clearly, so that you can speak clearly and only speak what he says and no more. And no more. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. then, then it becomes flesh. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Yeah. God has left the building. <laughs> but you're still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I agree. Jean, you, you jumping in? Or you still, mm. you still need time? I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm at that place, and you all know. I told you all last, you know, last week, week before. That's the place I'm, I'm at right now. Um, you know, I'm taking some time off out of everything and I'm hearing God, you know, for the first time clear, not for the first time, but clearer than I've actually heard before. So now I'm beginning to understand what directions I need to go in to become what he wants me to become versus listening to people mm. and following what people want want me to do want from me you know what i'm saying because i i have to somebody told me this a, a long time ago i'd rather man be upset with me than god be upset with me <laughs> That's right. i could do with y'all y'all yeah. could be upset with me if you want i don't you know i could take it or leave it but if yeah. god if god is upset with you you got a problem <laughs> you yeah got a problem. And i think i said this a couple of weeks ago it's better for you to um deal with yourself and get you right before God exposes you and make you a yeah. full blown. So fall on the rock. Idiot. Oh, the dung is in your on. face. <laughs> what was that? Did you say, Pastor Jay? I said, so you fall on the rock before the rock falls on you. Hmm. Yeah, because Malachi chapter two is no joke. Ouch. <laughs> It's no joke, Malachi chapter No, I've two. been praying and rebuking that. I said, Lord, I don't know if you've been cursing my blessing, but in the name of Jesus, I've been like, <laughs> listen, I've been praying. Because you don't know where along the line you may have, may have opened up a door or opened up a... Yes, and you're repent. like, oh, no, I, mm, I've been praying against all that stuff. Like, listen. Look, repent, show me, let me repent for that. Because just yes. in case, please, because that, that, yes. that's going to be so deep. Mm -mm. Because mm -mm. then you wonder why your money is funny sometimes. You wonder why. Listen, I'm, not, I'm not examining everything. I'm like, listen. If you, if you didn't have a fight in you, you might sit down, curl up, and suck your thumb. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'll just give up now. Just quit now. Forget mm. it. Right? <laughs> it's over. It is finished. <laughs> it's finished. I am done. <laughs> I am done. I'm done. It's no joke, man. I tell you, it's, you know, and so. Um, I think, I think learning about our character and what type of person we are as leaders, um, that we need to confront that we need to deal with that. Um, we need to find out what kind of person we are because we've made everything charismatic. Like you said, I think Patric uh, Minister Lockhart, you know, the charismatic stuff, the, that we, we're so caught up on the tongues and the laying on of hands and the rebuking the enemy and, you know, 
making our church big that grow that way and then you have so much stuff that's going on in the church character personality clashes character out of character and we don't want to deal with that you know we'd rather focus let's focus on the spiritual let's keep right. it all spiritual right. and not deal with you know the cussing the lying the cheating the the backbiting the envying you know the sleeping around the you know we don't want to deal with that stuff right sweep it under the carpet because you know shh, we don't shh, you know that'll sort mm -hmm. out itself just pray <laughs> just pray on it just pray <laughs> you can't just pray on so stuff. what kind of so what kind of leaders are we all right elder john um pastor jamal is going to start he's going to come in now so you might just move for him just in case yep okay all right sorry sorry minister Jason. what kind of leaders are uh, we what kind of leaders are we that's a good question what kind of leader are you can you say you, you can talk. we say I'm just saying, what can we say? What kind of leaders are we? What kind of leader are you? You know, can we say, can we look yeah. in the mirror and say, what kind of leader am I? Yeah. So what kind of leader are we? We've got if, to I, know. I, I think we can. Am do, I this leader or that leader? I think you do know some things about yourself, so you can do that. I think that also in that, it is, it is very helpful to have, again, we talked about this, whether it's the armor bearer or whoever that person is that doesn't mind telling you the truth. <laughs> you gotta have well, some accountability. accountability. Yeah. <laughs> because guess what? When I when I look in the mirror, unless I got three different mirrors, I can't see the back of my head. That's right. I'm thinking I'm good. I just see one. I just see one view. It's all good. <laughs> right. So it, you know, again, that's where that's where that leadership team comes in, or your armor bearer, or whoever that covering, or or, or prayer partner. Whoever that is with you, sister, 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 brother, brother, whoever it is, that you can be honest with one another, who, who sometimes knows the shortcomings, knows things, yet still can respect the office and help you. We all yeah. need to be encouraged. That's why this uplift. Hopefully, we are honest here. We are forthright. None of us is trying to say we descended. We're all trying to <laughs> ascend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first one. I didn't. I didn't descend. Not me. No, no. I know I didn't. <laughs> some, of, some, of us, some of us are still just trying to get up off the floor. Come on now. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, look, I'm, I'm still trying to hide in the back. I still got dirt and dust on me. <laughs> so look, look. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Evidence. <laughs> so it's, it's the so truth. having ha having an honest platform where you can speak and not be condemned. Yes. Where you can where you can speak. Where you can where you can ask for help, whoever that individual is, where you can say I'm struggling with this area, or, or I feel myself waning here, I need more help here, so that you can work together as a body. That's that's scriptural too. That if there's somebody stronger, bear up the one that's weak. I didn't say watch them slip. That's right. <laughs> Kick them when they're down. No. He didn't, didn't, didn't say watch them slip and point and then and then have a meeting and say mm -hmm, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you knew, then their blood is on your head. That's right. That's right. That means that you need and to I, know who you, is in your circle. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and that's a good point because a lot of times, even in the church, Pastor Janet and Pastor Jan and all of us ministers, it's hard to find people that we can trust. Even right. though we have people who are leaders, can you trust them not to expose what you're going through, what you're dealing with, what you're having to bear? Um, because I think a lot of times, I've heard people say this and it used to really bother me. They would say, I could trust my friends in the world more than I can trust my people in the church. Mm. Like, oh but Some, it's it's true. Something, something's wrong with that. But something's wrong with that statement though, um, Lady P. Yeah. Something's wrong with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because, we can't do what we're supposed to be doing. Right? <laughs> we're not doing or we're not at that place that we're supposed to be. We have well, we ought to be we ought to be unified in the spirit um, when we deal with uh, with with one another, right. and um, when you we were you were talking before I think it was Pastor Jay was talking before, you know we 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 ought to look to look to look to God in 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 Christ as as the object of our of our hope and our salvation. And so as we do every day, we have to, as much as it is hard in the world, we have to deny or, you know, ungodliness, we have to walk away from that. 
We have to, the worldly lust, you know, the lust of the eyes, the, you know, the pride of life, you know, we all have to deal with that within our lives. But how, how do we deal with that as a Christian? And how do we stand firm in our faith and live righteously as a Christian? You know, and sometimes even in our speech, as Christians, you know, we can't, we can't determine whether we're speaking um, from the world or from a, a, a Christ-like um, posture, because we, you know, we're ready to give everybody a piece of our mind and we are, you know, ready to, to, to gossip and talk. I'm dealing with a group of ladies now. I'm really struggling with it. And I think that um, when they don't have the heart and the, you know, and the DNA of God, then it's, it's a struggle for you to really work with them when you are, um, when you have really been taught the word of God and how to deal with people, but everybody wants to see, they don't want to take correction. They don't want to take, even you say, you know, you know, well, you know, you did, you shouldn't have done that. goes back to the leader as I'm talking to you. I'm not the boss. I'm not the boss of you. And I'm talking, <laughs> yeah, you, you're a baby in Christ. And somebody, I'm trying to lead you in a path that will help you and guide you. I try to season my, my words with grace. Every time, yes, Bible. you know, I, I, you have to do that because then you, there has to be a difference between you and the person in the world. And so when you speak to that person, you season your words with grace. And yes. so actions and our attitude, they um, not only have to please God, but they also have to have an effective witness, has to be an effective witness to understand. Yes. You know, when we speak, when we open our mouth, like somebody said before, you, the light of God has to shine through you. When you speak to other, to other, to unbelievers, they got to see something different about right. who you are. Yeah. And, um, and, 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 and so the truth of God's word must be revealed when you're speaking to them that you know who God is. The God that I serve, you know, is able to do this for you. And so that will be able to allow them to come to Christ. So what shall I do? I want to know something about your God, the God that you save, the hope that you have and salvation. And so um, when, we, when, we, when, we, um, when we are in the word of God and when the word of God is revealed through us, that helps our spiritual well-being. You know, it helps us to be in a better place of, of um, dealing with people or talking to people because it's if we're not unified in the spirit, if we're not, if we're not on one accord, you know, with the, it's, 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 it's a struggle out there. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, Mr. Can I, can I extend that? Can I extend that beyond it being just for, um, for those who are believers? How about, since we're talking about leadership and leadership character, how about the leaders in the church? We as leaders in the church, even how we talk to other leaders or we talk to our team should be something that encourages them to be better. Right. You Absolutely. Know what I'm saying? Absolutely. How you deal with those that you are working with, those you are shepherding, those you are over, those you interact with, whether they're your colleagues, whatever the case may be. Somehow, if you're going to, if you're going to be a leader after God's own heart, even within that people should look and say, as I grow, I want to grow towards that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. you should, there should be a standard. Um, just before we go on, I, hey, Pastor, uh, what, what, I'm sorry, I didn't get, what's Jamar. the name? Hi, right, Pastor Jamar Gerald. How Jamar, are you? Jamar, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Glad you could join us tonight, man. Uh, just feel free, man. We're just, we're just chopping it up. <laughs> okay. As they okay. say, uh, we're dealing with character and in leadership, and uh, we've been dealing with that for the past. I was trying, hopefully, we're trying to conclude tonight. <laughs> uh, we'll see what okay. the Lord say. Uh, we've been in this thing. This is the fourth week, and but it's been good. It's been rich, and the Lord is, you know, really... Um, we, we kind of encouraging each other, finding things to strengthen each other and what, whatever the Lord um, gives you to say, we just, you know, say to encourage and strengthen. And so that's the objective of this whole thing um, that we call it the uplift because every time we leave here, we are uplifted. <laughs> so, okay. so we thank God. Thank God for you, man, joining tonight through Pastor Jay, we, Pastor Janet, we thank Thank you for uh, coming on tonight and uh, just feel free jumping whenever, you know, you feel something, whenever the Lord says something uh, for you to share, then share it. That's what we Okay, do. no All problem. Right. Thanks for having me. Uh, no, no problem, man. Uh, just, just to go, say, go back on what you said, uh, Pastor Jane uh, and Sir Jean. Listen, everybody, I don't care who you are. Everybody needs an accountability person. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Whether it be your armor bear, like you said, Pastor Jay, you need an apostle over you. You need a, if you're a pastor, you need somebody like we just talked about. Somebody needs to look at what you're doing. Somebody should be able to speak into your life, you know, and tell you, you should be able to accept correction. You should be able to, because we don't know everything. Moses wasn't perfect. You know, just, let's just not even, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't a perfect man. No leader. What well, David wasn't perfect. <laughs> and we know that, you not know, David. <laughs> not David, um, they, you know, nobody was perfect. And so everybody needed, Jesus needed God. God was his covering, you know, and if Jesus, Jesus needed covering, then why we think we don't need an accountability person? Why do we right. have leaders running around talking yeah. about they don't need no covering? They don't need no leader, man. You, my you, church. Yeah, my church, my four, and no more, you know, my, you know, <laughs> you, you, every leader, pastor, prophet, you need an account, you need somebody, because when you tell me that you're a leader, I automatically expect a higher standard, a higher level. I expect that because you cannot be in Christ and be on the same level as the people in the benches and the pews. I, There's I, a standard that I expect to hear. There's something I expect to hear coming from you as a leader. If you say you're a leader, you know, then that says to me, you've been trained. <laughs> you, you have some knowledge of the scripture. You, your, your, your doctrine should be sound. You know, you, there's certain things about okay. you that, mm -hmm. that should be expected, you know? And that's why, that's the problem. You know, the scripture, I think it's in, um, man, can't remember it right now. Um, but it says that there should, there's a higher standard expected of you teachers. If you want to be teachers, then there's a higher standard that's going to be expected of us. And so to me, I think the, a lot of the problem is that we, we don't have accountability in the body of Christ. And we have a lot of leaders running around giving people false and wrong information, not the right information. You're looking at this person that you're supposed to be patterning after your life. You're looking for this person to feed, lead, guide, um, protect, love, but you're getting the complete opposite. <laughs> well, I say we just gather everybody together, gather everybody together, gather all those wonderful leaders and bishops and those that sit on high chairs and let's all just get together and look at Malachi too. <laughs> you know what? That's, that's why I said. That's why I said that's earlier. I agree. You, you I need agree. to know who's in our circle. You need to know who do you have in your circle. You should have, uh, like Lady P said, someone there who can uh, um, to keep things when you're going through, but also someone there who could tell you, like, come on, our Bishop John. You know you was out of order. You shouldn't have done that. You said that. You know. You didn't say this right. Or I see you falling over this way, so I need to reel you back in. So for me, I think it, it's a circle. Even Jesus had his closest circle. You know, he had the 12, mm -hmm. but then he had the, the three. three. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the circle. It's still, you have to be leery of who you have in your circle. Why can you trust them with your, uh, uh, when you're going through, when you're crying out yourself, can you trust them to, uh, uh, to be there for you, and also can you trust them to say when you're out of order, when they see that you're slipping, because we are our brother's keeper. Yeah. So it, it, it's, I, for me, it goes back into the circle. Like, I look at um, Chadwick Boseman. His circle kept the fact that he had cancer for four years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't even go to some people in the church in leadership <laughs> <laughs> and tell them that's that. Please keep this quiet. I don't want nobody to know. <laughs> and the next <laughs> Sunday that you get back. <laughs> oh, so thank you. I'm sorry to hear that you have, you, you know, like, how did you not know a, that? And then, not, you, you know. Not even, not even next Sunday. You, you say it in confidence in the office. And by the time they get on the pulpit, it's part of the message. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're preaching like, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the circle. I think it's the circle. And that's why so many people that's not in the church don't want to come in, come into the church because but, but here we go again bad. again this is a time when as elder john said recap recalibrate reevaluate step back because guess what for those same very reasons you just mentioned elders of uh, jackson there are leaders who suffer in silence mm -hmm. yeah there are of ministers and pastors who suffer in silence a who are going through Look at them talk about the yeah. suicide rate that's coming out of ministry. People mm -hmm. in ministry who are supposed yeah. to be covered by God, covered <clears throat> by the word, 
in a safe place, but are committing suicide. Why? Because they're suffering in silence That's because right. it is not a safe place for those very reasons. But guess what? Here we go again. He told us that wolves would come in unaware. And we have to remember, while righteousness was sitting at the, supper, the Lord's supper table, while salvation was sitting there, while healing was sitting there, while deliverance was sitting there, Judas was sitting there too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I the think, devil too. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think last week I shared a little bit about um, the Zoom conference I had. <laughs> and it, um, yeah, it was, I, we were talking with pastors and faith leaders about um, creating safe and sacred spaces in their houses of worship or um, um, the congregants who are suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. uh, there are um, some of our, our, um, our congregants are sitting in the pews and they're crying out for help. And um, every time we see a tear, um, we, we, you know, we somehow summing up as go pray it off. You know what I mean? It's something you need to pray away. And, um, and, and, and we find that some things we don't want to approach, right? And if it comes to us, we don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And when we don't know how to deal with it, we may share that conversation with somebody else, hoping that it's in confidence. Mm -hmm. But what we do is that we have, um, we have, um, defied the confidence of somebody else and allow them to now become a wounded healer. Um, and so they have, they have now removed themselves from the very place that they thought was safe for them. Uh, now we're gone like I've had church hurt and um, all, of, all of this comes out of uh, that same very reason you described um, Pastor Jay. Because then people, when they have, when they're going through stuff, the very place they go to find solace is in the church. And Even when those who have been, those who have been <laughs> there for years, I'm told, I'm told that those that might have been there for years as well can, can hit a season in your life where things fall apart. And how many times have you heard people say, I couldn't think of anybody to call. Right. But you've got a membership of 2,000, what, I couldn't think of anybody to call. Right. What does that say? So when so, so when that individual says something like I trust my friends outside more than I so and so, that should be a warning to you right there. That that's right. an indictment. It right. means we need to, it means we it means we need to check ourselves. And part right. of that again, again, looking at our leadership, the way our leadership deals with our the, the, the problems and the issues of the people should be training those other leaders of how they should deal with it too. Mm -hmm. If it, if this Listen, as a, as a therapist outside of, as a therapist then, a licensed therapist, I, can, I tell youth all the time, you can tell me anything in confidence. There's nothing you're going to say to me that will shock me. However, understand this, anything that harms you or somebody else, I'm telling you now, it's right. not a secret. Right, right. <laughs> so you know up front. So when you come to me up front and you start saying, and I say, listen, understand, this thing here is not a secret but I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm going to do, where mm -hmm. I'm going to go, why I'm going to do that, and I'm gonna go with you all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not leaving. Yeah, because some, yeah. and, some and I, situations, I, they have to, you have to have intervention, whether it's yeah. 911, whether it's yeah. 411, whether it's uh, therapy, whether you, there, there are, yeah, there are issues that you have to, but yeah. you, like, I, like you said, Pastor Day, you have to make that clear up front that, listen, that man right. has a gun to your head three right. times, no, we have to, we have to yeah. bring in intervention, yeah. um, and because we don't, we can't pray everything off. I know we're, we're very spiritual, and that was 20, 20, 40 years ago. That was the answer to everything. Well, just pray, baby. The Lord will. The, the Lord has given you common sense, yeah. and five senses without common sense is nonsense. nonsense. <laughs> and so you have to use basic common sense in in dealing with people. And I hear you, Minister Jean, because I know that you deal with all groups of people. And yeah. for a long time, the church did not know how to deal with HIV. Right. People right. who came in with HIV, people who are um, homosexual and lesbian and whatever, the, you know, we, we were like, it's taboo. And so we'd rather let them go to another church rather than try to learn how to deal with them in leadership and love them in and let them come on in. No, you don't have to be in ministry, but we can love you in and you'll find a safe place here. Mm -hmm. 
And I, we, we didn't do that. Uh, well, I got too and, many. And, I got too many comebacks for that lady P, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to let them right? go. <laughs> I got too many. <laughs> Hold on which one second. Part, sir? Which part, huh? The last part. Um, <laughs> see, I done lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about the homosexuals and stuff. Um, <laughs> Hold on, it's coming. <laughs> but shouldn't we should have we should be able to deal? Here with it you. is. Right, there mm -hmm. should be, right. Thank you, Pastor Jay, and thank you, Gene, for sharing that. Pastor Jay, thank you for saying what you said. You said you're a licensed therapist outside of what you do as a pastor, right? Now, God has given the body of Christ everything we need should be in the house, right? God has given us what we need. There are people that God will bring into the leadership or the church. And we as believers, we should take advantage of those things because here's a, we put every, everything is spiritual for us. Like you just said, Lady P, go pray. We, you know, just pray about it. God, you know, Jesus will fix it. Yes. But he's given you somebody there in that congregation. That's a licensed therapist. Even, or not even your local congregation. Not even your local in congregation. The in the kingdom. Somebody in the body of Christ, somebody in the kingdom. And a good leader would know that where to point. If you can't, I said it last week, if you can't handle what you have going on in your, sit, your church and your situation, if you've got to know somebody that deals with whatever that comes in, comes in. because be also for pastors, you have to create that. If you, if your church is just all anointing everybody with oil and just speaking in tongues, casting out devils, you know, if, if that's all you do, then what about the community? What are we doing about the community that God is bringing into the church? We've got to cater to the community. In other words, people come from different walks of life with different things. And we've got to be in the position, not just be so spiritual, but we have to understand that these people are coming from different places, wounded, broken, hurt, busted, and even leaders as well. So creating those spaces within that body of Christ, as Minister Jean said, we have to start looking at things practical. Deal, get the barbershop going. Get the, the, the uh, soup kitchen going. Get the um, counseling grieve, grieving committee going. Get the, you know, we've got to start putting things in place and stop thinking about, you know, just growing your church by anointing, laying off a hand, because we've got to reach the community. We've got to reach the community. Yes. And so people are coming back. in broken. So I'm going to let you go, Pastor Jay. I'm going to let you go. We're coming in broken. We're coming in. They're coming in hurt. They're coming in homosexual. They're coming in. And if you are not equipped to deal with these types of situations, then you've got to get equipped. Get equipped. Find the resources. There's got to be people who find out who's laboring amongst you. What does that person do? Okay, that person's a counselor. Okay, let me use him in this ministry. That person is what? Okay, so let me try to put her over here so that she can do. Because a pastor can't do everything. You all know right. that. A pastor, God didn't say do everything in the church and kill yourself. Kill you. That's kill why you. these pastors are, are kill, committing suicide. That's why they're falling by the wayside because they're most of them. And I'm not saying all of them. They're trying to do everything themselves. And a lot of them are broken inside. Where do they go? Yes. Right. Where do they go? You need to have a covering. That's right. Go to your, <laughs> go to your overseer. Go to the person that put you in that position. Go to somebody that knows more than you, that has looked into what you're doing and can say, you know what? This is what you need to do here. You're doing this wrong. Come here. Let me talk to you for a minute. Let me, let me give you some wise instruction, some counsel. But right. us, we don't want that. We just rogues. We just do, you know, this my church and this. <laughs> a lot of us yeah. get a high off of that. Go ahead, so Pastor this, Jay. I'm sorry. This is why I was, when you talk about that, this is what, when you say all of that, it goes back again to, here we go, the leaders again, because you're going to have to deal with your own stuff first. Yeah. When you, when you, when yes. you put it this way, whatever it is you have a bias against, whatever it is in your mind that turns your stomach, understand it's going to walk through your doors. Mm. Right. What are you going to do? So you're going to have to face your own little demon stuff. You're going to have to face your own little aversions and everything else because it will come in your face. And you still have to be able to respond in the way that we talked about the character of a leader with the integrity, with that, with that seriousness, with that, that vision and that passion and that determination to help that individual. You don't help those you like. You help everybody. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's true. And now, even the scripture that you use, Pastor John, it talks about being sound in faith. Yes. And a yeah. lot of us are spiritual and we get stuck right there. But it says also in love, in charity. Yep. And um, for a, a long time ago, Patricia will remember this. I taught a, a series on love God, but you got to love people. That's because right. that's, what God, that's who God loves is people. And people are coming, like you said, in different forms with different ish issues. And we have to equip ourselves. And if we're not prepared to equip ourselves, then we should understand that people will not stay. Right. Well, it's going to be that simple. People, people, in our, people is our business. You know, yeah, exactly. without people, we have no business. Right. And, <laughs> and so we have to um, uh, be equipped, uh, like you said, and trained. And like in, in, in our area of, of counseling, and there's a certain level of integrity that goes with that, mm. right? When um, you're in that area in the church where they can trust you to come and confide in you with something that's good, that's, that's, that's an area of high integrity for you to maintain as a leader. And so when you start to leak things out, um, you know, and it comes out, and, and then you, you, the, nobody trusts you anymore. Because, you know, I came in confidence. Right now, I had a, I had a conversation with my pastor. He called me and um, he had received a whole line of, of uh, notices on his desk early in the morning. He just had a new baby. And he's getting text messages 2 o'clock in the morning about somebody being sick and um, or what's going on with somebody in, in, their, li in their lives. And, He's like, um, I'm one person. I said, you know, well, Pastor, that's their choice to do that. You know, um, they do that. He said, because he says, and he shared this in confidence. He goes like, because they don't. Uh, this is in confidence. Why are you talking? <laughs> I know. I know. He didn't call it any names. Not, you didn't no, call any said, names, did you? <laughs> they, no, I did not. He said, they, they shared in confidence with him. That's what I said. He said, they shared in confidence with him. Oh, okay they cannot share the, some of these things with, with you. Okay. anybody else. Right. Which is and true. So, yeah, right? So, you know, people have, you know, That's we have call. as well as people's um, privacy as well, because people are going through, and I think you, um, Elder Stacy said something about, um, about um, Chadwick and about him. And so, when you are not on one accord, when you are in, you know, and people know, you know, because some, I, we know in the church, those who can't hold water, we know that. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 we know. And sometimes no. it's the pastor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we know. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so we you said uh, that. Yes, she did. <laughs> Sorry. So we, we um, uh, you know, certain assignments. <laughs> Are not given to people, you know, who are are not going to hold information with integrity, right? And so it becomes now a burden for the, that one pastor to say that I have to deal with all of this because I don't have leaders mm -hmm. who are to um, to 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 hold with integrity information because somebody if somebody has a a, di a cancer diagnosis, I don't want it to be all. I want to I don't want to suffer in silence either, but I don't want it all over you know, the church. I don't want pity. I want prayer, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so sometimes you got to see it from the other side. You got to see it too, because we got to be able to trust our leaders. And when, once we have seen, we have, um, uh, we have, we, we know that there's no credibility there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna share with you something for you to share with somebody else. Well, that's right. very true. Hmm? That's very true. I think even within the leadership team, you can go to places and, and see that the leadership team itself will not share with their leader. Right, right. That leader that's, doesn't know. that's what's happening right now. I mean, that's what's happening right now because um, they, don't, they, don't, they don't trust you uh, with their information. And um, because I am in the area, I work pretty much in the area that you work in, um, Pastor Jay, I have to have confidentiality. You know, I cannot, you know, it's, 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 it's the standard of what, I, of what I do that I can't just go and just, you know, talk about everybody else's situation. So I'm, I'm at liberty to talk with my pastor about, with the pastor about um, 
what, what he'll ask me, he'll ask certain questions and what to do. And, and, and so we'll have that conversation. But if you're not trained in that area, then you don't need to know because then what is it, what are you going to do with that information if you're not going to pray for the person? You know? So that kind of reminds me of when you say that, it reminds me of, I'll give you an, 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 an instance. Um, myself and my, my husband was placed to, to work with, with the, the married couples, yes? And so he kind of said, well, hey, this is good because you're a marriage and family therapist. Come on, you can pull a workout <laughs> together or something or whatever the case may be, yeah? So I said, reluctantly, I was like, okay, come on, all right, honey, we'll we'll do a we'll do a, a meet thing. Let's get them together. Let's kind of let's kind of just see where people are at then first. Let's do that because you've got to create a safe a safe environment first, and everything else. So we 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 had a gathering, and there were, um, you know, I gave him some things to do, some questions to ask, and he took the men separately, and I had the ladies, and we um, asked a, a series of questions, which I would normally ask basically up front. So it gives you an insight to where they're more at in terms of their marriage and relationship and everything else like that. Um, they were put, they put a couple of things down on paper, which they were told is definitely held in confidence, right? It's just the starting point. So I know some of the issues that we need to go forward and address and talk to open. And I told them that if they cannot be honest, and if this is not a safe place, then they don't, they shouldn't come because this has to be a safe place if you want to grow and if you want to get better, fine. The meeting took place. About a week later, my husband received a call and um, um, he and the team that was over it, they were told, they were asked, you know, how did things go? They said it went very well. People were excited, which they were. And so they, they, were, they were told, I was told there were some things written down. Can I have a copy of them? Can I have the stuff? So my husband came to me and said, listen, you know, so-and-so wants, wants all the things that the people wrote down. And I said, well, he can't have them. Nope. I said, this was done in confidence. And some of this stuff would not have been said in front of him, but I'm trying to right. help. If I'm gonna right. help, he cannot mm -hmm. have this. Mm -hmm. And um, so that, that went on for a little while. And I said, listen to my words very carefully. I cannot release it. I will not, I will burn. <laughs> so that didn't happen. Uh, just, if I tell you, it wasn't, it wasn't just a few weeks later that another group was assigned to the couples. And, and that's the confidentiality because some things they will not say in front of the pastor. I went into, oh. we went into um, a church and we did, we did um, bring information on substance use and HIV, um, um, HIV, um, awareness. If, right? Awareness, right? <laughs> and we did, we did some testing and we had some HIV positive results, right? In the church. So, Right. We had some. <laughs> Say it again. I didn't hear. Sorry. He said in the church because I think he's 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 still you know. Oh, in the church. Oh yeah, in the church because we do. Remember yes, that doesn't come inside the church. You don't. You yeah. Don't forget, so we do we do that because that's the work I do in the community. That's so what, that's what she does. Uh, I'm sorry, pastors. People are still having sex in the church. Oh, so, no, no. Oh heavens. <laughs> in the church. So, <laughs> Go so, forward, um, Mr. G. So before we fall out, I'm going to have to spin my chair around. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay to be Patricia. pregnant, but you know. I anyway, spin my so, chair when things get crazy. It's like, okay, I don't want to do all right. that. So don't, don't. Okay, all right, yeah. All right, go. So my team, my team and I, we went in and uh, we do testing. We were there till 12 o'clock. And some people are very, you know, HIV friendly. The church is very HIV friendly. And they, you know, they're not afraid to have, we had a town hall meeting, we brought awareness, we did testing, and uh, we had some positive results. And so we shared with the pastor and uh, his wife that there were positive results. And she asked, may we have the results? No. Nope. Uh, nope. And, um. <laughs> Might be your uh, husband. <laughs> oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just slipped out, I'm sorry, it slipped out. And we had to kindly, you know, just inform her that um, we can, that's not something that we do. Right. Um, it's not, we can provide services for the person and we can bring them into treatment. Uh, but it's not, we don't, we don't share. We don't, not even with their brother or their wife or husband. We can't even share the information. So that's how confidential. Isn't it, isn't it, 
isn't it interesting because as you talk about that confidence thing and even in leadership and everything else you still have to be able to help people come out of where they are when it, if it's right. something that they're not supposed to be in terms of their their walk with god and yet you, you still want to be able to bring them into light but still protect them mm. you still have to be a covering right. that will That's have protection right. just like jesus with the, did with the woman that they threw down before him and he wrote on the ground in this with the stick they say part of that was to protect her it didn't condone the mm -hmm. life she had it didn't right. condone right. he wasn't condoning where they found her he was just mm -hmm. adding protection to that right. love and grace that he was about to extend to help her get out of where she was and that's that safe and sacred space that you know we create for um for everybody we don't yeah. need to you know um be sharing people's personal information so that puts people on edge individuals on edge when they're going through through, through something and sometimes it's it's the church is allowed to know and that's sad because you know um, the same thing that we talked about last week when i gave you the example of the young lady that was struggling with the same that that, that um, homosexuality and how that worked out i remember in that group that i told you about there was a young man in that group um uh, living in life eternally free um gave his testimony that broke my heart he what was was homosexual he had been healed he'd been delivered he'd, out of the lifestyle, he was now one of the counselors there. He um, was at a church and he's been in that church for maybe eight years working with youth and young people and just a, and a blessing in the church. And after about those eight years, he felt that it, it was safe enough now to, to tell the pastor what he had been delivered from and where he came from years before, yes? He spoke to the pastor. Do you know the following week, they said that he could not work with youth they barred him from being around young people and took away his membership. What do you think that does to his, his faith? Right. What do you think that that taste does right. to him in terms of the body of Christ? See, see we have broke my heart. So in other words, you've come out, you've come out, you've been set free, but you need to get back in the closet. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're not, we're not delivered. We're not delivered from, from um, healing, allowing people to heal from their past. And I think you know? um, we still hold people hostage to where they come from. It's just a good thing God don't reveal all our dirt. Put it that that's way. Right. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. right. Let's put your life mm -hmm. up on the screen for a second. Let's let's just exactly. go back, roll back the curtains a minute and oh, see. No, <laughs> Open up that door and see what fall out. <laughs> <laughs> you have a um, lifetime movie. <laughs> Break out the popcorn. Let's go. Um, one of the things I wanted to comment, thank you for being so uh, transparent there and candid, Gene. Um, Minister Jean, I think, I think a lot is missing um, in the body and as far as leadership is concerned, but I will side, see, I will side with Pastor Jay tonight when pastors bleed and when they are alone and they are cut and they are hurt and they are, you know, they, they, they hide that part of them from members and from people that don't understand their frustration, that don't understand what they have to deal with. Because as pastors, you are on a higher, you are judged by a higher standard, not just regular membership. So there's things that you have to deal with that you can't share with anybody and any, because, you know, people, they just lead, um, lay members, they just won't get it even the circle that you have. Listen, that's why Jesus had to go by himself many times. He took Peter, James, and John or to a certain point, mm -hmm. And then beyond that point, they could not go because there are things that Jesus had to say to God to the that Father. they wouldn't understand. You see what I'm saying? But the mm -hmm. point is Jesus had somewhere to go and see as a leader or a pastor, there should be somewhere and I know this is, you know, I'm opening a can of worms right here, but there should be somewhere. You, leaders go to leaders. You can't go take your problems to a lay member or to somebody that they just won't understand it. You've got to take it. You don't take your problems lower. You take them higher. Higher. Mm -hmm. you, you take yeah, them up. The lay, the, lay, the lay people will not be able to relate. They won't be able to relate. They're looking up to you. They're, they're looking you. up to you. And for you to, to admit that you've got some weaknesses, I some mean, shortcomings, it, it brings, they think of you in a lower place like you're not, like you're not a human person. And so you're right. You have to go to you know, people who are of like mind or above you 
um, so that they can counsel and encourage you. Um, if you have a great spouse, that does help as well. If you have the right spouse that can help you in your ministry, yeah. lift your arms like, um, you know, like what happened with Moses. But if it's not your spouse, then it should be uh, your covering, your spiritual covering. And a lot of pastors don't have covering because they're, they're the pastor and they don't feel like they want anyone to know their weaknesses, um, that they have issues and problems, that they're, that they're bleeding silently. And if it's not dealt with, though, what happens is that they bleed to death. Bleed. They burn out, or commit suicide, they quit ministry, they just, so yeah. Or, or they bleed on other people. Oh, yeah, that's what she said last yeah. week. Yeah. I think yeah. Pastor or they said bleed that. on other people. Yeah. And that yeah. is the dangerous yeah. part of it having, you know, your leaders bleeding on, on other people. And mm. I always tell uh, uh, meetings that I go to and things that happen in church and things that I, say, I don't even, I don't even share with my husband because I don't, I, you know, that's not that, that I, I'm, I, I'm in that ministry. You're not, you know, and I don't, yeah. have, I don't have that. I don't share that with my husband. Mm -hmm. because yeah, you, you know what, uh, uh, Minister J, uh, I don't share a lot of stuff with my husband either because he had, you know, my husband is an ordained deacon, but he's not in his position because he had church hurt from the prior ministry that we was in. And even though he still minister, he's a share. He ministers to the young men, and, you know, that's locked up and that he come across. But there's things that I would dare not share with him that goes on in mm -hmm. leadership and in the church mm -hmm. because that would just push him further away. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, so, people tell people tell me stuff, or, or they tell either way, my husband or one of us, and they said, "Didn't you tell you?" Or didn't you? I know <laughs> because you didn't say it was public knowledge. So we mm -hmm. we have to protect you and until you make it public. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. I think I think that, and like I said, you know, Jesus, you know, the, he's the standard. He's the model, right? He had to go to his father because there's, like I said, Peter, James, and John. You know, there's certain things that Jesus only could say to the Father. There's certain things he would go and pray. He would go and talk to the Father. If it's and the last instance in the garden, he was speaking to who? His Father. If it's possible, <laughs> if it's possible, let this. You know, so there's certain things that, as leaders and leadership, you know, before you bleed out on the sheep, as Minister mm -hmm. Gene says, before you commit that suicide before you leave Miami and go to New York in a hotel and shoot, you know, and, and shoot up before you sleep, you know, like other uh, ministers that, you know, sleep with the other sheep or, you know, there's got to be somewhere, even if it's a group of pastors outside your, your body. That's right. See, and, and us, and I'm going to just share, I'm going to say this uh, pastor Jamar, you can back me up. Um, man, sometimes we don't like to talk about certain things. That's yeah, true. You know, because we feel we have this thing called ego. We have this thing called, and then once we get in a group of men, you don't want to expose yourself because you're going to look like the weak one, the vulnerable one. Because mm -hmm. we walk around with this thing called testosterone and ego. So we, <laughs> ladies, you might not understand that, or you might. Oh, no, no, we, we, yeah. we're yeah, grown. You know. Thank you very much. <laughs> we're grown. We have, we have husbands. We have husbands. I'm just saying. Or ex ones. Look, or, or ex ones. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna stop okay. right there. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna leave it alone. Oh, okay, you back. almost got it. You almost got it. Okay, uh, I'm just saying. Lady yes. P turned around all the way around. But, <laughs> but, but there's there's got to be somewhere, and I just say this, and I'm just saying this from my heart. There's got to be somewhere. I would hate to, the fact to know that there's a pastor that I know or a friend, a friend of mine that's a pastor that you know, you have to resort to the, the other things before you can come and share and say, and say, look, man, listen, <coughs> this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah. Can, what can you, what advice can you give me? Can you help me with this? Or point me in the right direction. Right. You know, I'm being as yeah. transparent and as honest as I can be. I can't take this to the congregation. I can't take this to my fellow elders. I can't take this to even my wife. Mm -hmm. Point me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there Job? Some... Job? Yeah. <laughs> Job? <laughs> said, Is that what you said? Talk... I said Job couldn't even talk to his wife about what he was going through. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I, I just believe yeah. there, there's there's a certain because I'm you know I, I feel I feel the pain I feel the pain of 
pastors that that struggle you know um dealing with wrestling with things that my god if i wish i could just say this to somebody Mm -hmm. and they could understand what i'm what i'm feeling right now what i what i'm going through right now i wish i could there was somebody i could just unload that's why i say and i say it again you need you know pastors and leaders we need to have that covering we need to have that accountability person persons or or the three right elder stacy you need a peter james and john and you need somebody above them yes like <laughs> jesus jesus had god G- god was jesus's covering wherever he went so that's where the buck would stop he would go to god but there are certain places he would take peter james and john he would pour into them minister to them they would protect him <laughs> right they would walk with him certain places so that that's what I believe. I, you know, they're humans. They're, they're humans too. I mean, you know, we need we need we, they're humans. Yeah, mm-hmm. are they? <laughs> I, thought they I thought they were superhumans. <laughs> I, I know. I know that. I I know that as a leader, I went through things that I certainly did not speak to my pastor about. I did not talk to him about. I did not feel safe. And covered enough to do that at that time um and i think that had i not had some other outlets that got allowed in terms of and and, and as far as into nyack college i'm talking about saved professors that come and point to you and say the lord told I, I kid you not i had one professor come and say to me first class i'm sitting in the back he took attendance and everything else everybody's going out he stops me and says what's your name are you so and so i said yeah he says um, okay i need you to write down what you need the lord said i need to help you wow I kid you not. And I'm, First I'm class. look, look, look. I'm saying this that when you don't have those kind of I easily become overwhelmed, even as a leader, become overwhelmed, become discouraged, become drawn down. Yes? Yes. Um, if not if not the grace of God, if not the the thing that that he allows that individual to come along that could minister to you and still understand that you're still called, yeah. that your struggle is, does not disqualify define you. Or define the, you. Yeah. Doesn't define you or, or, or disqualify right. you from being called of God. In That's fact, good. you know what? I can say that I understand now more than ever that some of the things I went through qualifies me to be where I am. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought it was this, I thought, you know, you can go through things where you think it disqualifies you. And so you need to close your mouth. You need to, to shut up. You need to not, you need to not do what's burning within you because, you know, you fell here or you fell there, whatever the case may be. But I understand now more than ever that it qualified me. What Jesus went through qualifies him yep. to be the person we go to when we want healing. He knows what that is about. When you're bleeding, he knows what that is about. If you've been hurt, he knows what that is about. If you've been talked about, he knows what that is about. If you feel like you're all alone and isolated, he knows what that is about. If you're struggling, he knows it all. He has been qualified. He walked the road to qualify for that. Amen. And so, you know, sometimes the things you go through as leaders as well, if we could just come to that place where we could understand as well, where somebody else could say to you, I hear you struggling. I, I get it. I see so-and-so. Well, I'm going to walk with you and know that God's going to use this. It's going to qualify you to help somebody else. Mm. I just wish, I just wish, you know, we could understand what you, you just explained that, you know, we don't use it as um, against your past against you, but we use it to help you in what you're going through. And I think that's the struggle that some of us, you know, go through is that we can't forget about the past because you just talk about that young man. He has been, um, he has gotten over, you know, he's been delivered from uh, the act of, of, um, of that behavior Mm -hmm. of sexuality. He's delivered. Mm, Years. Years, eight years, he's been delivered from that. And now that he's walking through uh, and a new path, we can't accept who he has become. What about the new creature? And, and, and we're now new creatures in Christ. What about, mm-hmm. so does that only apply to certain situations? Mm-hmm. Once you go under, 
and then you come back up that you're delivered from that. But you can't, you can't accept me that I, that who I was, but now who I am. And so oh, yeah, you can testify and say, you know what? Praise the Lord. The Lord delivered me from drugs. Everybody cheer and say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They start shouting. <laughs> right. Oh, thank God. Right. He delivered me from smoking. Oh, everybody start. He delivered me from drinking. Oh, everybody jump. I was in a convention <laughs> when a young girl got up and said, after they had just danced, I mean, praise dance and everything, a part of the team. And she was caught up in the spirit. And she, she said, and I've been delivered from homosexuality. I tell you. If I tell you the rush of people that went to that thing to pray to, as if they were casting out a demon, she just told them she was delivered. Yeah. <laughs> she told yeah. them she was delivered and she's been, you know, and, and there was a slew of people that went forward just to start rebuking. Oh, no, 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 no. I said, good gosh. We are confused. We don't listen very well either. No. That's no. the Janet. We don't always listen. We, we hear what we want to hear. And no. that's, a, that's a bad characteristic of a leader or or anyone yeah. who's working with people um yeah. because we prejudge mm -hmm. the situation if when we don't hear it correctly she just testified that she was delivered and all delivered. we heard was homosexuality yeah. that's all exactly we that's and so all. we choose we choose yeah. to listen or we choose to hear what we want to hear mm -hmm. and that's how they um we um those those people who are delivered from such as homosexuality, it's, it's, it's again, it's tied to immorality. Mm -hmm. And so now that we are in the, tied to immorality and sin, and now that we're in the church, just to think, just as, as we um, had that discussion about those who are individuals who are living with HIV, people don't accept you in the church because they, uh, they don't know, they don't want to know that you're living healthy. They want to know, how did you get it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. yeah. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us, Lord? Please. What is what they want to know? What is wrong with know. us? <laughs> you, you, yeah, you. How did you get it? How did you get and it? They always go to the worst case scenario. You're immoral. You're sinful, and 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 there's a lot of shame attached to it. Tell me mm -hmm. and tell me all about it. Let me get my popcorn. Let me get. Yeah. <laughs> But they never want to know how did you get started with drinking? How did you get started with? They don't ask you those questions. No. You know, how did you get diabetes? How did you get diabetes? That's the chronic illness. Mm. How did you get diabetes? What is wrong with us? a compulsive liar. Right. Mm. Right? What? And that's why, right? This, that's why this, that's, this is what this whole thing is about, concluding with this character, because a person's character, you know, for that young person or that young man, that young woman, you look for character traits. If they say they delivered, then there should be a certain change now. There should be a character that you should see. There should be a character that should be expected of them. There should be the character, you know, not so much the, ah, bah, 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 you know, the tongues and the whatnot, because um, we don't hear very well. As you said, Lady P, we, <laughs> you know, we, we have our hearing, we need hearing aids or something. Um, spiritual, spiritual hearing spir aid. Spiritual hearing aid. We need to, uh, God, <laughs> clean, clean out the wax or something, God. Clean, clear, clear it out for me. Um, character is important. Character in leadership. Those are the things that I, I was, one of the questions I, ha I had to ask you all tonight was, when you're choosing leaders and leadership, what do you, what are some of the things that you look for in a person? What do you, you know, what kind of things um, stand out to you when you're choosing, when you're looking for um, people to oversee people, you know, when you're looking for those types of, you know, what do you look for in a person? Because it's not just, yeah, man, yeah, she can preach. He can preach, man. She preached real good. And or she can sing. Let's mm -hmm. make her the head of the praise and worship. Mm -hmm. He can mm -hmm. preach, man. Let's make him a, a pastor, a lay pastor. Let's, you know, we start to give people positions without even, um, as you just said, Pastor Jay, without even having without them credentials, credentials or tr <laughs> trod the road. You haven't even trod the path yet. You know what I'm saying? You haven't qualified anything, but just that one song or that one sermon. Oh yeah, let's make, you know, back in the day, that's what we used to do. We used to do that. Make somebody something without even checking their character, mm. checking them out. We, we just put them in positions, know that they don't know. How can you teach what you don't know? You know, mm. you give people sermon, you, you can just because the Lord anointed you that one time <laughs> <laughs> to minister to that one person, 
and you ministered the, oh yeah let's make him a you know let's let's anoint him today you're gonna be our deacon from now on. you're gonna be our you know you can't do that people need to be trained and they need to be taught from the school mm -hmm. that i'm coming from that's why i'm thankful to god for for the bishop that poured into my life for 15 years poor when i tell you he opened me up like a fish like right minister gene Filet. He filleted filet us <laughs> like a fish. Filleted us. Okay? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. We, were you, we were open. We were open. We were. He said, okay, you, 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 God called you, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if he called you. And Ooh. I'm telling you, the path that we had to go, that's why when I'm talking right now, I, I know what I'm talking about because I've been there. <laughs> I understand ministry. I understand the call of God and I understand standard I understand character. You know, these are the things that we need to, 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 to understand coming into leadership. And so when a person says, God has called me, okay, so what, what do we look for? What are we, you know, what are the signs? What are the signals? What are, what, you know, what are the but flags? You, you, you said something, I think you said something, you can't teach what you don't know. And <laughs> but we also can't lead where we haven't been, right? And Come so- on. Uh, we can't lead anybody to some place that we haven't been. And I think Pastor Jay said it, that unless your past will equip you to get to, to the place where you're going or to help people through the process of what they're going through. And um, we, uh, and that just, while you were talking, just leads me to, do we really believe the word of God mm. that when we ask God for deliverance, that we be really believe that deliverance is a thing, that deliverance really happens to people. Is it, mm. is it, does it really happen? Are we believing that when we can't get past people's past to let them, you know, to believe that they're free from, from um, their past? Whatever it is. What, I from think whatever the people their past that, is. I think the people that have um, issues with believing deliverance are people that are still bound. Because right. if you are, if you are somebody oh. that has experienced the power of deliverance or healing, um, true power, you know, true power. And we're not talking about you spitting in a bucket and then going back to what you, you know, did. Um, but having that real raw experience, you would, you would believe somebody um, mm -hmm. if they tell you that they had an encounter with God and it didn't mm -hmm. take, you know, they, they had an encounter with God and it, and God delivered them immediately. If you have experienced that type of power, I believe that you can receive it when somebody else says it, but right. oftentimes it goes back to that character thing and being willing to grow that people just go through the motions where they don't even take the time to really walk through um, their walk through their deliverance, walk through their, the character and the image of Christ. Everything now is um, seeker friendly, you know, <laughs> Just, just show up. As long as you give an offering, we we okay. And <laughs> it does water down the message of Jesus Christ because it's like, okay, if you believe in the the power, the healing, the deliverance, where is it at in your life? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Sure. And, see, and you know what? Yesterday we, when we we're talking uh, in Galatians, um, we were talking about. Uh, when Jesus says that same thing about what you mentioned about, he goes and he says, Abba, Father. Jesus, he says, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. And when he says, Abba, Father, Abba is, is a word that they translate for daddy, which is a different kind of relationship, right? You know, it, sons with their mommies and, daugh and daughters with their daddies. It's a different kind of relationship. And there's a, um, when Jesus talks about Abba, Father, I think it was actually in the one you're talking about, when he said, let this cup pass away from me. Mm -hmm. So it was in that particular scripture, but he says, Abba Father, and we were talking about that last night. Like, imagine that, that the truth is we have access as joint heirs with, with, Christ, with Jesus, joint heirs, mm -hmm. joint heirs, joint, we're adopted, joint heirs. We mm -hmm. have access to the same power that Jesus had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that deliverance that you're talking about, that if you experience that deliverance, then that deliverance doesn't just happen in the church building. That no. deliverance should be able to extend in your life through you to others as well. Wherever you are. But Pastor Janet, what, what the, I think the missing link is people get delivered and we do not like, I don't know what his name is, sorry, Pastor Jamal. Jamal. We don't yeah. walk them through their deliverance. Sometimes 
you, you get delivered right away, but you've got to be taught the principles, the amazing. foundation of staying delivered. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we don't do that part. And so then people go back and they give up on Christianity and all that because we don't walk them through. Deliverance is real as far as the power of the Holy Ghost doing it, but you have to then learn how to walk in it. I think there's a couple that of stages. Sense. I think it's, I think you need to be yes. delivered, healed, and then whole. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the delivered, healing process is the walking through. So you get the delivered sometimes is very instant. The healing may take a process of letting go of going, you know what I'm saying? Going through a process and then become whole. Um, it's a journey. I take. It's a journey I took. And I, and I learned that I said, God doesn't, doesn't, God told me, I don't just want you holy. I need you whole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whereas whereas as, as elder john says we focus on the spiritual so everybody's trying to live holy trying to live holy do the righteous thing live holy when you're broken inside and you're not even whole come on and god had to deal with me to say i need you whole not just holy so good you got the spirit stuff down now go back and get this stuff down and that was difficult it was painful painful very painful you can't you can't you can't create the potter that has the clay on the wheel. You cannot create what you have in mind or the vision that you have without water. You can, you, you can mess with the clay all you want, but that clay will not get into shape until you get whole, until you put the water on it. The water, now, now you start to take shape. Now it's a process. You know, it's a process that you have to go through to create this image, but you keep adding the water. You know, the water is the process making you whole, making that vessel, making that washing, thing. Washing. It's, it's cleansing you. It's washing you. It's fashioning the you. By the word. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's it. It's all of that. <laughs> but you cannot do that without that. You can't get whole without all of that process. So that's what I believe that process, you know, we have marred vessels, we have broken vessels, we have, you know, vessel. We have, we have cracked, leaking vessels. Cr leaking, corrupt vessels. Mm -hmm. we, we, my God, we got all. In the potter's hand. Yeah. In the potter's hand. Don't forget yeah. that part. Because a lot of times we think you're only cracked outside of the potter's hand. We're only messed up outside of, of the potter's hand. But no, they were marred in. Yeah. Yeah. Mama, oh, I almost got in another language. In the <laughs> Father's hand. Because yeah. we forget, because we, we, we spiritualize so much, that we forget that we're still messed up. We're, we're messed up. We're, we're See, here fine. we go again. We're, but we're still messed up. And See, we're in go. the Father's hand. And so, yes, Elder Pastor Bishop Dunn. <laughs> All of those titles <laughs> that we keep calling you. Yes, he's got to keep plying and plowing and molding and shaping and shh, breaking it down and oof. I'm grateful for the fact that I'm in his hands mm. because once I'm in his hands, I know that he can do with me whatever he wants to. And that's the best place to be right. is in. If I was on the floor, <laughs> there'd be no if chance. Jump out. Okay. If I on. jumped off, jumped off his get got out of his hands. The safest place we could be right now is in his hands. Yeah. So in his hands, now he can work with us. He can, you know, he can fashion us into that, that person that he wants us to be. You know, we're going to crack, marred, scarred, hurt, uh, raped, you know, all of that is in his hands. You know, abused, oh, yeah. uh, choked to death, <laughs> uh, slapped, all of that is in his hands. And a good God thing about the bishop is the fact that because we are in his hand, like, you know, sometimes I've seen a potter with the clay on the wheel and sometimes they fall over and, he, and they catch it. So mm -hmm. you might fall over and he still catch you. Mm -hmm. And catch then the, you know, catch, so sometimes he break in. you back and have to break it all the way back down to build it back up. And then it still may not be right. So you break it back down some more mm -hmm. and build it up. And the next time he'll drop, he'll, build, he'll knock it back down. And as he's 
break you down and build you up, you get higher and higher. But mm. I just like the fact that if he took over, he catch you and you're still in that hand. And he says in his word that you're not so easily plucked. So if you're in mm. his hand, you are not so easily plucked out of his hand. So if that's <laughs> the thing about the potter and the clay. Because that clay don't bring it up, don't bring it up, and he'll catch you. It's too late, <laughs> and he'll break it back down and build it back up. But he still got you in the hand. What did I say a few weeks ago? That point, once you get to that point, after he then beat you down and <laughs> form you and beat you down some more, he put you in that. Come on now. And once you get in that fire, and then you come out, you are that glass. You that beautiful piece of artwork that he took the time to mold you, but you had to go into the fire so you get burned mm. off those. Oh, yeah. hallelujah. Well, the, well it, it, take out the, it, it, will, it will take out all the impurities. That's what yeah. the fire does. It will take out all the impurities just the, and it gives you just enough glaze so that when he puts the glaze on, it doesn't just soak in, but it will get to shine. Yes. And, 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 when, and you don't break in the fire. You don't break anymore. I love no. what you just said. Mr. Jackson, that when, because when, when you when, truly, when you're doing pottery, when it begins to <laughs> cave on one side, it's not destroyed, but it begins to cave on one side. The potter will indeed catch that one side and just yeah. build it back up and blend it back in so that we can be encouraged that, guess what? There may be times when we might break on one side. We feel the limp, right? And God just catches us before we are destroyed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Catches us before we are destroyed and just build, builds it back up and blends it back in. And it is seamless. You will not look like what you've been through. You won't yeah. smell like what you've been through. My God, what mm. an Abba Father, my what, daddy. What's that process, Pastor Jay? What's that process that he used that you- Wedging. Spoke? Wedging. Wedging. Or wedging. You have to wedge the clay. <laughs> And when you wedge the clay, you, you wedge it, then you roll it with the rolling pin. When you roll it flat, that's when you begin to see, you'll see little air pockets. Mm -hmm. If you see those little air pockets, you have to pull it back together and you wedge it again. You, you wedge it by making a square and you slam it and then you take it and you slam it and then you take it and you slam it. And then you I've been slammed. I've been slammed. You roll it, you look for more air pockets and you keep doing it until there is no air pocket. Mm -hmm. Then you build what you want to build with it. Dr. After J. You have, oh <laughs> That's the point. That's the place where a lot of us don't understand. I've been there. I don't understand what's happening in my life right now. Stuff is all over the place that, you know, this is not working out. That's not going right. That's the potter's wedging me. <laughs> he's trying to get me to understand something that he's in charge and not yes. me. Yes. You know, he's the one that's in charge. The potter is in charge of the clay. You cannot be in charge. <laughs> and, and, and Pastor John, he's not intimidated by the dirt. He's not intimidated yeah. by our dirt. He's that's not it. threatened because our dirt is this color, been through yeah. this and cut, he picked, picked it out of that yard. And he's not concerned about way, because you know, we're, we're funny. We, we'll, we'll pick what we want. He's not intimidated by our dirt, and he does his best work with dirt. Yeah. With dirt. And like we said, the diamonds are found in the dirt. Yes. And mm -hmm. when you look in Ezekiel, what did we say? He talked to the bones, and the bones are where? The bones were in the dirt, almost dirt. covered by the dirt. But he spoke to the bones while they were in the dirt and still brought life out of them. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> That's where we originated. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and in the process of all of that too, you know, I just go back to uh uh, uh was it a month or so ago, but uh when uh Pastor James talked about the wedge is that I love how God he might build you up higher than someone else, but it does not mean that your little vase can't hold a lot. Right. You know. And that's where we have to get as leaders and just because someone might be this high does not mean that they're greater because you down here, because that little vase holds a lot and sometimes holds more than the bigger vase. Hmm. More weight. It's the value oh, no. of what he sees in it. That's what, can, yeah. what, he, what value he sees and what he's working with. And we cannot devalue ourselves. It's not always God, the quantity, but the quality. Mm -hmm. God knows our heart. I think we have to keep remember, reminding ourselves, God knows our heart. He knows the intent. He knows the motive. We fool nobody 
but ourselves and a few that don't have discerning eyes. That's but right. God knows. And if either, I remember God said to me, either you're going to trust me or you don't. There is no halfway. You trust me fully. And if you trust me, walk like you trust me. Talk like you trust me. Or you don't. Yeah. <laughs> either or. I think, I think, um, listen, I'm, I'm blessed <laughs> and, and uh, I'm strengthened right now. I just love that concept because the concept is the potter doesn't care what type of clay is in his hands. He, he doesn't It does not matter what the vessel looks like in his hands. He has the power to make something out of you. So it encourages me and it tells me that, you know, God is in control no matter what's going on. He's able to wedge me. He's able to, you know, smooth off those rough edges. He's able to take what you have and make you into something. You know, you may feel that you're not getting anywhere right now. You may feel that, you know, Lord, what's happening? This ain't happening. My ministry's not growing. I don't even know what's going on today. I had a, you know, the potter knows what's going on and he has the control and he's not going to let you fall to the ground. Thank you, Pastor Jay. <laughs> he's not going to let you fall to the ground. He's not going to let even the words that you speak, you know, you might think that they're not making sense to anybody, but I'm telling you, God is not his word. He's not mocked. You know, and, and so, so I take that concept seriously because, you know, I want him to, to work on my character, you know, wedge my character, smooth out my character, you know, uh, so that I can produce the fruits of the spirit so that I can, you know, do what I need to do for him now, you know, so I'm encouraged by that. I don't know why we got on that, <laughs> but it's but, good right here. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it also, you know, when you go through that, that, the, the powder on the clay and the wedging, not only in the fire, not only does it defi uh, refine you, but it also defines who you are and what Defined. you're Defines. Yes. It defines who you are and what your character is. And and so sometimes the fire is not, not a bad place. They're all, you know, it's for us to be because it, it, it brings out uh, sometimes the best in us, in who God <laughs> called us to be. And so even though it may, you know, we may, we may have that struggle through it, but when we come out of it, we are better than we were, than we were before. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, listen, this is good. And, uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to go, but <laughs> I wanted to, uh, just hear from if anyone has to, anything to say about what, you know, this is the ninth month. This is, you know, the month of, you know, newness. Um, birthing, birthing. Birthing month. This is, you know, what is God saying to you? Um, if you can say, like, in real short, I don't want to, I know maybe I should open it up next week again just to kind of finish it off. But <laughs> um, I just wanted to hear from everybody if, you know, this is, this is our month. You know, what is God saying to you? What, is, what are you working on? What are you... You know, what do you see? Um, this is, you know, again, since February to now, we've been isolated, so to speak, quote unquote. You know, some some are just coming out now. People are just opening back up now. You know, what are we seeing? What is God? What, you, what is God saying? Um, I think in the midst of the um, in the midst of the pandemic, God was really taking the focus off man-made altars. Yeah. Um, he was really taking the focus off man-made altars and getting those who are uh, willing to be in right position and willing to be in right alignment, refocus on his work mm -hmm. and his kingdom. Uh, this was a time where people should have been eliminating excuses. Like you can't blame your pastor. You can't blame your apostle. <laughs> you can't blame your, you, can, you know, you can't blame your bishop because this was a part, this time right here was a personal time um, for people to really dive into who God has called them to be. I really believe that um, we have hit a shift um, in the spirit and um, we are getting ready to enter into one of the greatest times of 
revival, even yeah. in the midst of whatever is going on. We are getting ready to see God um, release and pour like never before. But at the same time, he was um, separating the wheat from the tear, too. So everybody, if you haven't been doing what you're supposed to be doing <laughs> in this time, everybody is not going to be privy of what God is getting ready to release. Yeah. Um, so I'm really, even in the midst of everything that's going on, I'm really excited about this next season for the church. Um, I, I believe that it's going to be a strong season. Um, mm -hmm. And um, like somebody had mentioned that this is a, this is a month of birthing and a lot of um, in prayer the other day, I really just seen how heaven was, um, <clears throat> heaven was releasing things that people um, need for this next phase that they need, you know, things that we have been praying for, that we have been asking for, those who have been, um, that gave God another yes, that has been standing flat foot. God is getting ready to release some strong things in this season. Well, that's good, Pastor. That's good. I believe, I, I, I agree. I, I definitely agree with you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for being honest and transparent. I, I, you know, we appreciate that. We know God is doing is, you know, let me, let me not even talk. I, <laughs> anybody else? I, I don't want to mess that up. <clears throat> anybody else have something? Well, I wrote, I wrote down because the question that you all you said, what's on your heart? What's the Lord saying to you in this season kind of thing? Um, and there were, a couple of things, four, four, four things that just came to my mind. And the first one is complete the assignment. Mm. And I felt that since the beginning of the year that he was saying to me, complete the assignment I've given you, complete it. Um, that there were since things I started but have not finished, just yeah. kind of put them on the back burner or, or just been um, procrastinating with them. And he's saying, finish the assignment. Um, the other one was reach for me. Mm. reach mm -hmm. reach go beyond where you are reach mm. for me um the other one was pour pour yeah. into others like never before pour pour into them and the other one was follow me watch me work wow mm -hmm. what was the first one complete the assignment complete the assignment we have you see i, I look <laughs> the horsemen have already left wow the horsemen have already left complete the assignment those of us that have been given assignments on this earth as as uh, minister kim mm -hmm. reminded us that whatever our gifting is it's not for us it's to answer a question in the earth for somebody else you pour it out and you give it for somebody else to receive that answer they're looking for it and you've got it we've got it so complete the assignment. Stop being selfish. Stop procrastinating. Stop hiding. Stop making excuses. Why? Stop putting everything else in front. Now you have nothing to put in front of the assignment. Mm -hmm. You can't say it because of work. You can't say because of church. You can't. You have nothing to put in front of it. Finish no the excuse. assignment now. No excuse. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> no excuse. So I, I'm in that. I'm in that. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> for sharing that um but i'm in that place of completing my assignment pastor john you know that mm. a very candid conversation last week and, um <laughs> god no no god just revealed some things of what i need to do and um it was confirmed uh pastor john confirmed that at a conference. so we have some work to, i have some work to do and um, we're going to meet, um, you know, <laughs> we're going to meet and um, complete the assignment. And so um, this is a season, as Pastor said, that God is getting ready to release and God is getting ready to pour. And um, as he does that, we must be the available vessels for him to pour into. And um, we have to be that that example in that in the um, uh, the the in the doctrine, doctrinal stability and the integrity that God has given us, mm -hmm. and I think that's the place that we need to be. That integrity, and we got to be be um, be have to have sound doctrine. 
when um, when we are going to um, go and do as God commanded us to go, as in Matthew um, 28. And so uh, He's preparing He's preparing us even in the midst of this pandemic. And um, it, uh, and if we're not ha if we don't if we don't have sound doctrine, then we're not ready to lead, right? If we're not understanding what God um, in in understanding the Word of God and what God is telling us in this day, um, then we're not ready to lead. And so that's what, you know, in my prayer time, I heard, you know, I was just, you know, when, when, when we were talking about declaring and decreeing, the God's when we declare and decree that we're setting things in order, we're asking God to set things in order for us. And so when we pray and, and use words and declare and decree, we got to be careful that if God is setting in order, are we ready to follow that order that God is setting for us? And, 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 and so that's in my, you know, in my, we, I, I have, right now I'm in the midst of fasting and um, because I want to hear from God. I want to, I want to hear, hear, hear from God and, 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 and so that he, he is ready to, um, in this season, in the next season as to what's to come, that I am ready for what God is going to do in my life. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on completing the assignment that God has given me. Mm. Thank you, Minister Jean. Thank you so much. We got work to do. <laughs> got work to do. <laughs> All right. Anybody else care to share? For me, God has been dealing, uh, showing me a lot of uh, dreams. I've been dreaming, but it, uh, in the midst of those dreams, um, he's been putting faces before me but it's to say to get ready, just get ready. You know, time is at hand to get ready. You know, that uh, we were, we are to watch and to pray. So get ready for what to come. But I, the dreams, so he's piecing these dreams together for me to be uh, clarity. But uh, Pastor Janet, I, uh, you know, you gave me a little com confirmation on my me being uh, hesitant of uh, what you have asked me. Uh, I think uh, about a couple of weeks ago, maybe a little longer. Um, I've just been a little hesitant, but you know, complete the assignment. So my answer to you is yes. And my answer will be yes, Lord. <laughs> All right. I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> We're just going to keep it moving. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Elder Stacy. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Lady P, uh, Minister Pat, are you? Um, so uh, when I looked at this email and, you know, wrote down... <laughs> You said this crazy, he crazy. That's no, what you said. no, 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 no. I, I think it, it was a, uh, it was a very on time question because it's, all it's, right. What is, what is the Lord saying to you in this season? And you know, of course, you know, it's very important to know what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, in this season, we don't want to be over here and and God wants us yes, here. But mm -hmm. uh, one thing I do know is that I need to come out of this pandemic better than how I went into it. All right. That's the one thing that, so it lines up with completing assignments and um, getting ready and all of that, because um, God has put a lot of things that, you know, in all of us and um, uh, sister Randy mentioned something about um, procrastination. And, you know, I have to now speak to myself and tell myself I'm a doer, you know, because mm -hmm. I have every other reason why I don't do what I need to do. But and all of that. Um, but my the other things was to get back on track, get focused yeah. and receive the newness that God has for me. Cause uh, even uh, lady P knows about something that I just came out of. And so now I'm just receiving um, that newness and um, birthing. You know what? I, I want to leave this earth, have birthed everything that God has put in me. Mm -hmm. And I just celebrated my 54th birthday. All and right. So it, Happy it, birthday. I, uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you all. So what it did for me was realizing I have, you know, most of my time is behind me. 
And I don't have any more time to waste on any more foolishness and Hello. nonsense, anything that does not line up with what God has called me to do. So now I have to, I'm trying to be very um, uh, specific. <clears throat> Even when someone asks me to do something, it's basically, does this line up with the assignment that God has given me? Because we get distracted in helping people and taking mm -hmm. on their problems and, 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 you know, all of the things. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking God to help me to stay focused on what he has for me, because I want this latter part to be so much better than what I've experienced in my life. And definitely a greater knowledge of who he is and a greater knowledge of who he is in me. So I, I'm, I'm trying to be as focused as possible. And, I, and the first thing I ask myself is, is this a distraction? Mm. I have to ask, is this a distraction? Because I'm easily distracted helping other people. Yeah. I will drop everything to help someone else, but won't drop one thing to help myself. <laughs> wow. So um, that's where I want to be is just totally focused on what God has for me. So thank you for that. Thank you, uh, Minister Patat. Thank you so much. Appreciate you for that. Can I just say amen to what everybody else just said? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you can't. Oh, wait. No, I can't. Okay. Um, I, think, I think this time for me now is a time to, you know, that's my word, recalibrate and to reposition <laughs> myself. Um, for a long time, I spent my time following someone else's vision and losing what I was supposed to do. And mm. um, with all good intent, don't get me wrong, and I, even, I have no regrets doing it. Yeah. But in the get you can get lost um, in doing what you think is right to do and miss what you're supposed to do. Right. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, not because it's necessarily wrong what, the, what other right. people are doing, but you, you can't lose yourself. So I am repositioning now. That's what the Lord is allowing me to do is reposition, clean me up. He's re, remolding me on the potter's wheel because mm -hmm. um, I'm going to come out stronger. I'm going to yeah. come out better i'm going to be wiser in my last few years and i feel that way too sister patricia is that the next years of my life have to be um so much more intentional yeah. than the last 50 whatever years of my life yeah. i have to do everything now focused um i love people but i'm prepared to cut a lot of things off i'm prepared to just let things and people go <laughs> because right. you know i've given so much of my time to other people yes. so much of my money so much of my energy uh yes. doing the good things yes. but sometimes not at the right time or sometimes it wasn't god's will for me to do it god because it was good right. i thought i should do it so now the lord is uh helping me reposition myself so I'm in a better relationship with him yes. and I can hear him clearly so I can go forward and propel and, and propel his word and his kingdom. So yeah. that's where I am. I am also of the mind of completing the assignments that he's already given me and to stop asking for new things, you know, because, you know, what do you want me to do? He's like, well, I already told you what I wanted to do <laughs> years ago. You haven't done that yet, you know, five years ago. He's like, oh, yeah, you really want to and he's like, complete, yes, so That's complete right. time is really good. Yep. So there are some things that are still outstanding yep. um, that he's spoken over my life yep. um, that I have not yet done. I was distracted. I was busy. I was uh, all of that, all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, with a good intent, the intention yeah. of heart. Still, I need to now be in his perfect will, not just his permissive will. Mm. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Amen. I can be a sober woman, so I can be a so sober mind. I can be um, full of faith and love at the same time and be a pattern of good works based on that same script. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I want my light to shine so that people will see a real Christian because mm -hmm. a lot of people are seeing people who are not real and I don't want to be one of those. So. Mm -hmm. Thank forward. you. Thank you. Thank you, Lady P. I appreciate that. Um, thank you for your honesty and candor. Thank you, everybody. Um, I just have some bullet points like Pastor Jay started. Um, God, what God was saying to me is, first of all, he said, every good thing is not a God thing. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, see, well, see, yeah. I was just thinking it, that it might be good, but it's right. not. It's not me, That's <laughs> right? Um, I've taken I've taken this time to take a sabbatical from the things that I quote unquote good things. Uh, so the Lord is kind of showing me that I need to stop everything because what I'm doing. Um, he said to me, I've been uneasy for five years in Atlanta. <laughs> I have not um, settled. I'm not settled. And I've been doing things like you, Lady Pete, helping out there, like um, Minister Patricia, helping this one, serving here, doing here, and still uneasy. So the Lord just said, stop. <laughs> um, he, said, he said that I prepared you. I'm preparing you in this season for what's coming. <laughs> um, he said, what's coming, he's going to show me soon. Ooh. He's going to show me soon. But I can't get it until I stop everything. I wow. can't, I won't know. <laughs> so I've taken this time to kind of start. I told you, I think I told you all last week, this is the only thing that I've done that I'm doing right now. Um, and I told you, I've been reading and studying and I'm just preparing myself because that's what God told me to do for what's coming. <laughs> um, and, and that's it. That's basically it. And it's, he just said, follow him. I've been following a lot of people. I've been listening to a lot of words. I've been, you know, people what people want me to do or what they can see me doing um i had a, a prop some a prophetic um, voice about two months ago this woman kind of you know she told me everything that i you know needed to do and it was like i, I didn't believe it <laughs> so god had to confirm that again to me he said look knucklehead <laughs> you need to stop and you need to hear me because every good thing that you're doing is not a God thing. And so, That's right. mm, yep. so I'm, I'm learning now in this season to stop. And in the fullness of time, when God is ready, um, he's going to show me what I need to do. So that's where I'm at. I, I, I appreciate you all for your prayers and, um, you know, the words that you're speaking into my life. Um, they are making a difference. Um, I'm just building myself up right now because God is getting me ready for something and I need to be prepared for what's coming. Just like you said, Pastor Jay, you know, it's, it's going to come. <laughs> They're going to come. And so I have to be prepared. And so that's what, that's where I'm at right now. Um, it's a ninth month, you know, he's getting ready to birth something. And so I just have to be in position. You know, the birth in position is not a, a uh, cute position. You all know the birthing, when you're giving birth to something, you're not cute. Nope. There's no dignities out the window, integrities out the window. What you look like is out the window. You know, you're getting ready to, you know, push. And you don't care who sees. You don't that's care right. who's looking at you. And that's where I'm at. I really don't. I love, fo- I love people, but yeah. I can't take you where I'm going. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you don't want to come along, I can't, I can't bring you, you know. Mm. And, and so I, I love people. And like you, uh, Minister Pat, I've had to cut off. I've, I have to, my, I'm off Facebook right now. So you won't see me on there. <laughs> I've, I've cu- I have to stop everything. When God says stop something, <laughs> he means stop it. <laughs> because I need to, I need, I need to hear him clearly in this season. So that's where I'm at. That's what God is saying to me. I think sometimes, you know what? God will, will do that for you as an individual or, or, help, or ask you to do that because he understands that the stuff is getting in the way of the way. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, it's true. Stuff can get in the way of the way. And it, and it could be good stuff, like you said. Right. Doing all the right things, but it's not, it's not what you're, you're right. supposed to be doing at that time. Yeah. You know? Because you know, you, you get unsettled. You already know in your spirit. Restlessness yeah. in your spirit. You, you know it. I'm going to tell you this, and, and I know a lot of, don't, don't judge me. Um, <laughs> not, here, not here. 
<laughs> not here. Jean? <laughs> she said, not here. That, she, she knows how it is. I, I mean, <laughs> Patricia knows this. It was really, really hard. <laughs> I, I had to write a letter to my church and resign my position from everything that I was doing in the church. Because the Lord said, you got to stop the foolishness of just going through the form of godliness. Mm. It was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. I resigned everything. I wrote a letter and I read it to them the Sunday after church. I'm like, that was my last Sunday there. They haven't seen me since then. Because the Lord says, stop the foolishness. You're spinning your wheels, but you're not doing my work properly. And I was like, oh my God, how could I do this? And I had to do it. And I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. The devil has come at me trying to mess with my mm hand -hmm. and say, oh, look how stupid you're going to look. And, da -da 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 -da. and I had to get my warrior face on and just say, I don't give a hoot. I'm, this is what I'm going to do until the Lord is, gives me clear direction. I'm not doing anything. I just pretty much stopped everything like what you're saying, Pastor, mm -hmm. because we can get so good at being churchy yeah. that we, and I kept, I kept listening for the voice of the Lord and I was hearing him like, I love you, Patricia. I know you're doing your best, but this is not what I want you to do. And I was like, well, what else yeah. do you want me to do? I'm doing everything for you. Yeah. And it was just so, so frustrating to me. The worst thing is when you want to be pleasing to God and you just cannot find that place. Mm. Now, that's where I was. I was like, something is missing. Something is missing. God. Something is missing. And I had to step away from everything and everyone. And I, I felt bad to do it, but by the time I got to the place of making that decision, my mind was made up. A long, long, long time to get to that place. But it was like the Lord would not, it was like I was so miserable in my spirit. I was happy in the Lord, but I was, something was just not uh, sitting right. And I had to just shut everything down, shut everything down. And it's like, wow, now I know why I had to shut up. I didn't even know 2020 was coming. <laughs> right. It was mm. going to be like this. But I knew if I stayed in the place that I was, yeah. I wasn't going to be able to handle 2020. Yeah. And so the Lord gave me everything that I needed at the right time. And I know it hurt a lot of people. And I feel bad for all of that. But it was timing for me. And I don't regret it. Yeah. I'm saying it publicly. The recording yeah. is still <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, I didn't regret what I had to do. Um, my bad. Because I'd rather have Jesus. I, I, I need to have my peace with God. I need to be sure that God is with me at all times and that I'm in his will. And so, you know, it's, it's sometimes it who you think is supposed to be with you are not going to be with you. And you're going to have to do this alone. Yeah. But I'm with you. So those that you had to leave, you had to leave. But even though you may be alone, when you actually look at those footprints in the sand, those not yours, those are his carrying you. So you're never alone. It may seem like it, but you're never alone. But you're going to be that kingdom builder right now, and you got to be able to move. And when he said go, you're going to have to do it just like that. Oh, I'm a warrior now. Don't let these little tears fool you. Oh, I'm I, didn't a say that. I know that. I, I am not um, reading the spirit. Oh, yes. You know? But yeah, it's a lonely road though sometimes, you know? Yeah. And I want to say something to what you just said, sis, that one thing I when I get a chance to speak to my young people, I, I try to let them know, go and do what God has called you to do. Folks will talk about you whether you're doing good or bad. If you're doing good, you think you're too good for them. If you're doing bad, they knew you weren't going to be nothing anyway. So go ahead and do what God has called you to do. And we can't get caught up in what people think we should be doing, how we should be doing it. Just go after what God has called us to do. And that's to each and every one of us because folks are going to talk regardless. So we may as well go after what God has for us. Yeah. Amen. Listen, I, I uh, thank you all. Um, for being candid and honest and, and this has been eye opening and some such revelations have been revealed tonight and you know the word of God has been preached <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I, I do appreciate each one of you for being on this late and at this hour um, Pastor Jamar thank you for joining us tonight we appreciate you man of God um, thank you for your words and your encouragement tonight um, and you are welcome any time you can 
we appreciate you. Thanks man. for having me. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Any anytime. Um, love to you know break bread with you and chop it up if we can. Um, Most definitely. And uh, Minister Patricia, thank you also for being on tonight. You are welcome. I, I leave this invitation open to everybody. So you know, this is where we are Thursdays. <laughs> At the Thanks uplift. Um, um, Pastor, um, Pastor, Jamar, just to, oh, Pastor Jamar, just want to sorry, Pastor Jamar. Let me throw out there to you as well that Elder John actually does a, many many workshops in terms of the marketplace. So you might want to connect a little bit. And yeah. Of each yeah. other's brains and stuff. He's been doing that for years. Yeah. Um, and, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, Carrington, good. Would, Carrington would not let me leave. Carrington had, has been shoving this in my hand all night. I, I'm supposed to tell you all that he has read this Bible book to me. <laughs> oh, your son. <laughs> He's insisting that I tell you all that he has been reading the Bible to me. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay, Carrington. 